Good evening, party people, and welcome back to the bar. Tonight, tiki drinks. What is a tiki drink? If I had to describe a tiki drink in the most uninformed way possible, they are the drinks, aside from those Bloody Marys out there, that are really cool looking garnishes and stuff. They're really, really sweet. They got a lot of fruit in them. Use a lot of rum. You find them served in tiki glasses and stuff. The glasses that look like tiki heads and stuff. Ceramic, plastic, otherwise. They're cool. Some of them are even on fire. A lot of them include some crushed ice. Do I have enough crushed ice for this evening? I don't know. We're gonna find out there. Good evening, Annie. How are you? How are you? And to all the bar goers out there, hello there. I realize that the weather is getting warmer outside. When I think of the weather getting warmer, I think of beach trips. Although I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the beach and I don't go very often, I do think back to my years of my family vacations going down to South Carolina, Hilton Head Island every year and just like chillaxing. And as I've gotten older, as I've been able to dive deeper into the mixological craft, I realized that a finely crafted cocktail can really, really make or break an ambiance situation, especially on your lounge times. Personally, I don't know of any really good tiki bars in, the, in my family vacay area, and I'd love to go out and explore some of those, but I'm, you know, I'm usually alone, but I should just invite my mother out. I know she likes the drink as well. And he says, are you going to ignite a drink tonight? It's very possible that high proof rum may be floated on top of a drink and then lit on fire. I that's a, that's a maybe. I do know that at least one of the recipes curated for this evening does involve setting something on fire, although not necessarily the drink itself. Flaming drinks is a whole, I, I want to do an entire cocktail stream on flaming drinks. And um, to be fair, I did a little reorganization the other day. My propane torch doesn't work very well. It's like, I, I thought it ran out of fuel last stream, but as it turns out, it's still got like, like four fifths of its fuel left, seven eighths almost. And like, it just doesn't like, oh, now it's working. In any case, well, we will cross that bridge when we come to it, or so they say. So I wanted to start things off, usually, as I usually do, like uh, I'm getting into this format and figuring out what format of the show works with something a little little more simple, something that like really ease our way into the night. And I was actually quite shocked as I was reading through this book by Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp, Tiki Drinks, uh, Tropical Cocktails for the Modern Bar. It's the only tiki book that I have. It's, it's like the only book that I have on tiki drinks. There's entire lexicons out there on tiki drinks, and this would be one drop in the ocean of tiki drink like references out there. Uh, it just so happens that this is the one that I have. I don't remember where I got this book from. It might have been down in Disney Springs when I was there once upon a time, um, or it might have been at like a, a local a local like like a Philadelphia gift shop. I don't know where I got it from, but this has been here for at least a very hot minute, and uh, I like it. One of the things that intimidates me about tiki drinks is there's a lot of like special types of rums and other types of special ingredients that you need to go out to get in order to make a lot of the tiki drinks that you see here. In particular, orja, an ingredient that's popped up on stream before that uses some almond, almond milk, either fresh or just procured from the store, amaretto, orange blossom water. Some of these things may seem like, why would you have that in your collection? Well, you might if you're trying to make tiki drinks. Nice. Uh, uh, let me think of some other things that usually pop up there. Special types of rum, such as like a like a na like a navy rum, like like pusser's rum, which I did wind up getting a bottle of, and we will be doing a painkiller this evening. Lord needs a need need a painkiller. Um, what else we got? Rum Agricole, which is spelled R H U M. I don't know much about these rums or a lot of the history that goes behind them. If we do like a deep dive into rum one day, I hope to be able to sit them all out in front of me. And this is in preparation for that. I bought a couple of rums for this stream. It's gonna be it's gonna be tasty. I hope so. What's a Navy rum? You know, glad you asked that question, Annie. British Navy Pusser's Rum, Ron Rum, original Admiralty Rum, bottled by Pusser's Rum Limited, British Virgin Islands. Um, we will get back to this bottle, and I'll read what's on the back of this bottle. Uh, so if you're interested in what the heck a Navy rum is, we'll do a little more, more, more research then. Get a, little, get a little tip of the iceberg for those who are curious out there. Apparently only one of them, only one of the cocktails calls for this particular rum. Um, so I might need to be educated on where else to use Navy rum. 
Admiralty Rum. So if anybody out there knows a thing or two about tiki drinks, please pop your comments in. We're all here to learn together. But again, so back to the point, of, uh, back to the topic of hand. I was flipping through this book and I flipped through every single cocktail recipe. In the last day or two, I was like, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know what drinks I want to do. So I just flipped through the entire thing and I wound up uh, flipping to a page that mentioned a drink that I was actually already very, very familiar with. And that drink is a dark and stormy which uh, is, a, is, at least the way that I learned it, a very, very simple cocktail. And I didn't really realize that it would appear in a tiki book, but here we are. And we'll get into that in just a moment. First one up is the Dark Ampersand Stormy. When I originally learned about this, I was informed that it's supposed to be Dark An, as in like, like the number, like the letter N with apostrophe, but we're going Ampersand. I did that Ampersand really weirdly. And Stormy. Which, uh, that was my day today. It was a little dark and just, just slightly stormy. Uh, not in an emotional way. Like, it was actually raining outside. It was raining on the way home. It was, it was meh. And he says she's here to help. I always appreciate everybody's help. So the Dark and Stormy is a cocktail that, at least when I originally learned about it back in bartending classes that I took once upon a time, is like trademarked or like copywritten or some legal term by Gosling's, the company who makes rums. Gosling's Black Seal Rum, Gos Gosling's 151 Black Seal Rum. I'm sure there are other Gosling's out there, but this is the one that I concern myself with here. According to the page on the Dark and Stormy, I will read a bit of an excerpt provided by Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp. This is the, all, all the cocktails that I'm doing this evening are going to come from this book here. So it's a wonderful find. It's got a lot of really nice recipes in it. And it gives you, it gives you an intro on some of those special ingredients I mentioned earlier, tips on how to procure them if they're really difficult to find, and recipes on how to make them, such as for your orja, complex syrup, spiced simple syrup, um, things such as pineapple syrups and other stuff. So the Dark and Stormy, the lexicon says something like this. A two-tone cocktail is a Bermudan staple that is always made with Gosling's Black Seal Rum and ginger beer. The Gosling's has a distinctively dark color and a smoky flavor that offers a contrast in both looks and flavor to sweet, spicy ginger beer. And we recommend sticking to that rum for the best results in the drink, which I happen to have. The original recipe is limited to just two ingredients, but this version here includes a little bit of lemon and a little bit of lime to make the spice of the ginger beer pop ever so more. Um, I realized that my ginger beer is in my closet, so I will be back in the hottest of seconds as I walk off screen for just a brief moment of time uh, while I go grab my ginger beer, which um, it, that is not ginger beer, that is not ginger beer. This is ginger beer. I found it. Don't you worry. To doing a couple of improvements around here at the bar with the next things are more organized you might have noticed maybe ever so slightly that the bar is a little closer to the camera there are some improvements underway i have so much space back here this is this is awesome i love this um this is actually gosling's ginger beer it's just in a root beer container i, I promise you that I promise you that. Um, so originally this recipe calls for, I believe, equal parts over ice, Gosling's Black Seal Rum and Gosling's Ginger Beer. To my, like, the, if, if I had a can of the ginger beer here, I would showcase it. It's, it's distinctive looking. It's got a, a black seal on it. It's got a nice gold, um, gold around the can. It's, it's nice. It's a nice looking can. And to be fair, it is a very fine ginger beer. I have yet to have that experience to try a lot of like the, there's a lot of like local ginger beers that I can buy on my local Whole Foods. Maybe they sub out well. I don't really know. I do not have any of them this evening. So this is this is just what we're gonna what we're gonna work with. So in order to make a dark and stormy the way that Weston and Sharp would would give as to their instructions, we need some Gosling's Black Seal rum, we need some lemon juice, we need some lime juice, and we need some ginger beer. All of this is going to be built into the glass itself uh, with some ice, and um, we don't need a shaker for this. It's simple and sweet. So let me go down and grab my Gosling's rum, my Gosling's Black Seal. Let me grab, oh, there's actually not, whew, we're really, really low on that. Good thing that this is the only recipe that calls for black seal rum specifically. And then I got these two, uh, these two citrus things here, one lemon and one lime. We're gonna squeeze those out and just kind of put them into a glass. So the instructions say, first of all, to fill a highball glass with ice and then add our rum, lemon juice, and lime juice, and then top it with ginger beer. And stir it with a spoon if you want it to kind of change around the two-tone. It's cool because this rum, uh, in particular, this calls for an ounce and a half of this rum, so I may have just just enough for this. This is this is how much I have left in here. There is <laughs> there is not much at all. I might have just enough for that. We'll see. I might just pour the whole bottle in there. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great night so far. Um, so first, I guess what I gotta do now is I just gotta find a nice tall glass. 
I have these like really nice lighthouse glasses that I think I bought from Red Lobster. They served us cocktails in them and I was like, that's really cool looking. Can I buy it? And the dude was like, yes, you can. I'm like, sweet, I'll take two. So I did. So we're gonna need, the Gosling's Black Seal Rum actually comes all the way at the end because it's gonna go on top of everything else. So the first thing we need is some ice. I hope that I filled up on my ices. I did, I did fill up on my ices. There's just a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of ice for this stream here. So um, bear with me. And we might run out of ice. These these drinks are very intense on their, their on their ice. At least the ones that I've picked out. Some of them not so much. We'll see. Anyway, I filled that mostly up with ice. I'm gonna try to conserve a little bit. I'll take that little last ice cube. There's like there's five cubular cubes in there. Five bona fide ice cubes. Cubes we're talking about here, not any other shape. Although they're more likely rectangular prisms because there's no possible way that I'm going to be able to get that perfectly regular three-dimensional um, equilateral rectangle thing, which in this case is a cube, also kind of a square. Uh, it's just impossible. I would never hold myself to that standard. I wouldn't expect to hold anybody to that standard. It just feels wrong. Um, so what we need is to add half an ounce each of lime juice and our lemon juice. We're going to add ginger beer is there actually i don't think i have a it doesn't say here specifically how much ginger beer it just says ginger beer top with ginger beer and then stir to combine the ingredients although i can very clearly see in my picture here that there's some black seal rum up on top of it so um i'm gonna eyeball it because that's just how we do and i'll bring the cocktail angle over for that too but uh for the duration of uh the, the citrus we don't need to get all weird and close with that we'll just uh we'll just cut this back here like you would see at your normal bar. Okie doke. Step one, grab yourself a cutting board. Step two, cut a lime. Step three, cut a lemon. You're gonna need those. Oh, I probably should've, I gotta do that trick where like we get all the juice out of it. Trying to make sure I work on my technique. If I slow down a little bit, shut my mouth for just a brief second, I can focus on the technique at hand. It's a nicely juiced lemon. It's prepared. There we go. It's gonna give up. Ooh, those are some thick rounded, thick rinded lemons. Look at that. It's a thick rinded lemon. A lot of pith in there. That's cool. So long as it still gives the juice. Does it give the juice? I'm inclined to think it does. We need a full, it was a full ounce? We needed a half of ounce of each of these. So I'm probably gonna have some of these limes and lemons left over. No worries. There's plenty more time. There is so much more time to possibly screw this up. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be wonderful. You're gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. I'm, I'm definitely gonna love it. I don't know about you. I can't make any guarantees about you. But, uh, we'll see. So let's see, I got like one of these limes completely juiced. It's not quite a half an ounce. So we'll put that rind into the buckets. Bucket. Oh, that completely missed the bucket by a long shot. That's incredible. And we'll take a little bit of the rest of the lime. Need a full half an ounce. Half an ounce per se. There's a little bit left of that one. So I'm going to keep that on my cutting board. Thick and juicy, says Annie. Yes, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. So ginger beer, if I had to describe it, has a nice, pleasant sourness to it, but also a very pleasant bitterness to it. I, for one, really like the taste of ginger, like ginger root. I will drink it in tea. I like to put the ginger on my sushis and stuff. And I like the sort of, um, for lack of a better term, spark that ginger beer will give to anything that you put into it. This lemon is being a little difficult, so you'll excuse me a moment. Um, it's nice. It goes really well with a lot of things. And I will think about what those things are after I juice the rest of this lemon, which actually does not want to be very comprehensive with me. So, um, all right. This lemon is um, done so, or at least that half of the lemon is totally done. I need a little bit more. Not a lot of juice in this lemon despite the fact that I utilized the super secret technique of the ancients. Squeezing it. There's a lot of seeds in there. Get out of there. There we go. And then we pour some lemon juice in there. Ginger beer itself has, again, that kind of sour-ish note to it. If I had like the bottle of the Goslings in front of me, I'd read the ingredients on the back. We'd go through all the mathematics of how this chemical works with that chemical and makes your brain do the happy dance. Um, but one, I'm not a chemist. Two, I don't have the patience for that. And three, I just want to put this thing in my mouth, dude. Let's let it happen. I'm gonna take this lemon rind and I'm gonna put it in a separate location than I have the rest of the bucket because I have finally, I, not perfected, but 
I have developed a method to be able to reuse lemon rinds that I find very, very tasty. And what you do with this is you can make lemon preserves. You take your lemons, you slice them up, boil them a bit until they're nice and tender, put some sugar, put some salt over it, put some garlic over it, mix it with some oil, let it sit in your fridge. It's excellent on salads and it tastes so, so, so good. I will try to, uh, in the next batch that I make, I'll post the recipe in the Discord later because it is, it's game changing. It completely changed my salad game. I am totally on top of my salad game now with that. Um, I say that preemptively, uh, cause the first batch that I made was not only with lemons, it was also with limes and also with grapefruit. Grapefruit is really, really bitter. Limes are rather hard, but still tasty. The, the lemons are perfect though. Absolutely perfect. So let me take these guys out of here. And now that we've added, what was it, half an ounce of lime juice, or about 15 milliliters, and half an ounce of lemon juice, also about 15 milliliters, we're gonna add ginger beer until we feel like stopping, and then we're gonna add black seal rum on top of everything. So we're gonna bring the cocktail angle over a little bit, so we can get a view of exactly what kind of science we're creating behind the bar, which is mixological science, as I'm sure you are aware. That's what we came here for. Get a little closer, a little bit closer. There we go. Let's watch as this drink transforms into something equally drinkable, but slightly more pretty. Oh, put the knife away too. I'm not trying to hurt people around here. So now we've got, what is it, just about a little bit of that lemon and lime juice in there. Evidently, you don't need very much to get things going. But now we got our ginger beer. It is ginger beer, and it still has some carbonation left. Take a listen to this. Well, actually, that was, that was really, really, really lackluster. It smells like ginger beer, and it also kind of smells like. Do you have like a like a like a relative's house that like you've been underneath their staircase, and it has that smell that that like under staircase smell that like Harry Potter closet smell? It smells exactly like that. Plus stone, plus a stone patio that's got moss growing over it. Anyway, take your stone patio and um, pour that ginger beer up to. I guess as far as you want it to go. I, there, there is no measurement of how much ginger your beer you're supposed to put in there. Just pour it. And that's how much I put in there, just about. And now what we're gonna do is take the remainder of our black seal rum. It's the, the recipe I see says one and a half ounces, which is about 44 milliliters. However, there's not much left in this bottle and this has been in my collection for a very long time and I'm finally happy to move on to arguably better things. Now, we want this layering effect so what I'm gonna try to do is pour it on top of one of these ice cubes so that it kind of dribbles on top of the rest of the drink. Um, the soda is very sugary, so it should stay below. And this is alcoholic, so it should hang up on top. Yes, absolutely. Storm is a Bruin. That's cool. So you can very well see that beautiful layering effect happening right there. That is awesome looking i love the way that looks i we have completely finished this bottle of gosling's black seal rum we'll pour whatever left i have of it over there um that is it that is totally it this this bottle emptying has been at least two years of the making i just don't use this stuff very much i used to make myself a lot of um I used to make like a lot of moscow mules for myself so i used a lot of ginger beer i used to make a lot of dark and stormies because they were really simple to make so i just put the two things on top of each other into some ice and that was it. Although I realized over the course of the years, I'm not a big fan of sour flavors. I'm not a big fan of things that are super duper bubbly and super syrupy. So I stopped making those for myself a while ago because I need to move on to greener, more cocktail intense pastures out there. Now, in terms of the garnish of this drink, I want to get I want to get a little fun with it. So I'm going to put this off to the side for just a moment. It's it's going to dilute just a little bit while it's sitting over there. I don't think the layering effect is going to go away. That's just going to sit there for a little bit. But in the cocktail book, in the tiki drinks book, there is this really cute garnish that they showcase. And I will showcase that in just a moment as I turn to that page. Oh, it's the cutest thing. Check this out. They got like a little, they got like a little, uh, got a little boat on top of it. It's a cute little, a little, little boat thing. So I think it'd be wonderful to spend a little bit of time on the garnish because last week when we did some banana drinks, I was very, very, um, I was, I was like, I had a lot of fun with some of the garnishes that we made last week. And I realized my garnish game is not on point and I need to work on my garnish game. So as such, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time 
to learn how to make some fun garnishes. Literally, in terms of garnishes, the sky is the limit for anything. You can make anything look like anything else. You can set things on fire. You can do a little like montage of stuff on it. It's cool. And it really it kind of increases the wow factor of your drink. So I, I'm not super good at garnishes. So we'll play around with what we have a little bit and see what we can do with it. So what I see in that picture looks to me like a pirate ship. There is one half of a lime, one half here, which we already have. And we have like a little like rectangular strip of lemon peel. So I've got a really intense peeler up here with me. Bought it at a flower show once upon a time. It's really good at peeling potatoes. I actually peeled some potatoes with it last uh, last night. And um, well, this is what we're gonna do. And we're also gonna need, I will also need a little toothpick. So I'm gonna bring this angle back over here. We'll get up close and personal with trying to make a little, uh, little boat garnish. Gonna be pretty cool. Angle this towards y'all, so we can all get an idea of what's going on. The shadows are not really good over here, so we'll work on we'll work on angling. This is what I have left of my lemon. Um, that's the part of the lemon that didn't go completely squishied, and I think I might be able to get a rectangular piece of this peel off. I'm not gonna worry too much about the pith because it's not like I'm putting this in my mouth. Um, but if all else fails, I got other lemons. We got plenty of lemons for this time, so I'm just gonna try and just kind of carefully. Push this around. Whoop, okay, that was that was scary. Well, I got a little little piece of it off there. Mm, not a big fan of that. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a better one. I'd make a political joke, but I'll be nice and skip it. Oh Rye, you're so you're so kind. You're so politically correct. Good for you, Rye. I like jokes though. But perhaps if it's uncouth, we'll keep those for the private channels. So this was absolutely excellent. This was this was awesome. This peeler did an absolute number on this peel here. That's great. And I, the light really doesn't shine very well over here. That's that's very sad. That's okay. We'll put that away for later. A little lemon peel for I don't know. We'll, we'll put it in my I'll put it in my pitcher with the rest of the lemon scraps because I'll be preserving that later. So now what we'll do is I'm gonna grab myself a toothpick. I actually have one of these nice like um, icky sticks. Sticky sticks? I don't know, they're bamboo sticks. Bamboo sticks. They're these guys. And what we'll do is I'm going to stab one side of my lemon peel over here, trying not to poke myself, even though I kind of almost did. And then the other part is going to go all the way through to just as close to the end as I possibly can on the other side. I want this sail to be at full mast. Like, absolutely. And I'll kind of bring it all the way to the top. I'll try to do that there. Nice peel. How pithy of you. You need to slap it first and release those oils. If I'm using the oils, though, I guess I could slap the sail. Put a little wind in my sails. <sighs> anyway, we're getting there. And then I'll just kind of stick it into the rest of the boat. Oh, come on now. You got it. Come on, you got it. You got, you got it. You got it. Dom says, yeah. Cameron says, yeah. That's what it's all about. What is up? Yo. Yeah, I get you. I get you there. Hey, there's a little shippy. That's so cute. Oh, you can barely see the top of the ship. <gasps> Take a look at this little shippy. It's so damn cute. I love it. I love it. Now, naturally, because we're doing cocktails here and not just playing with our food, I'm going to bring the cocktail back over here. We'll adjust the angle ever so slightly to get a view of how the entire ship looks floating atop our stormy weather. Because if this is the dark and stormy, this is the ship sailing through the stormy weather. That's the, that's the flavor text we're throwing on that. Food art, garnish art. Wow, we still can't see the top of this. This is quite a tall boat. A very tall boat, you know? Let me back, let me back, this, back this up a little bit. We're going on an adventure. We're going sailing. Are we going sailing? We can go sailing today. That's beautiful. A very ship, 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 shop indeed. We, we we run a tight ship around here. Wink. In any case, that's kind of cool. It's like, like again, I don't do too many garnishes. Certainly not some of this fancy stuff, but I realize it's sometimes just as simple as just like mimicking what you see. And this one was a pretty easy one. You take a lemon peel, you peel it properly, you stick it on a lime, get a little bobby dance. Oh, actually, I just had an idea. All right, so it's a dark and stormy, right? It was a dark and stormy night. We were riding across the waves when we noticed a kraken in the distance. The kraken decided to stay along with itself, but so in it, and it walked away. 
waddled away, so is the Kraken say. Completely detached from that, the storm started rolling in, the waves started getting tumultuous, and our ship began to bounce up and down in the water, almost capsizing, although the pond that we were surfing in was very, very tiny and looked like a glass from a distance. Um, nobody survived. Everyone was dead. And now the drink has been, has completely, more, more or less completely incorporated itself in there. That's great. Food artists fart. You're right. Indeed. We're going on a trip in our favorite rocket ship, zooming through the sky. Little Einstein. Except we're, we're on a boat. And um, we're not in the sky. We're in the ocean. But technically, rocket ships are like sky boats, right? Sky boats? I guess planes are more aptly named sky boats. Ah, but spaceships are space boats. And uh, I like I like space boats. I realize I should probably have a straw with this, so... I'm gonna grab myself a I'm gonna grab myself a yellow bendy straw. That's the nicest straws, but there we go. I'm gonna do this one instead. So this was a dark and stormy, a dark and stormy night indeed. A dark and stormy can be made according to the Goslings recipe of combining, I believe, equal parts Goslings black seal dark rum and Goslings ginger beer over some ice. Layer it, don't layer it, mix it up, whatever you want to do. This recipe from Weston and Sharp uses an ounce and a half of black seal rum that is floated on top of half an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of lemon juice, both 15 milliliters, filled up to pretty much as far as you want to go with ginger beer. In my case, it is Gosling's ginger beer, except it's probably a couple years old. It still tasted like ginger beer when I tested it before stream. It did not have much fizz to it, and it kind of smelled like the underside of my aunt's house if I was sitting underneath the staircase, which wouldn't be the first time. It looks pretty good. If they were powered by a solar a solar sail, Dom would allow this to be, I guess, a space boat in this case, or a sky sail or something. Rai says, with the size of that glass, it's more like a dark and stormy Daniels. Oh my goodness. Is it because of the lighthouse? Is it because of the thinness? Hey, yeah. So what does a dark and stormy taste oh, smell like, first of all? How does it smell? That's pleasant. It's probably because I'm sticking my nose into the boat that we made. It smells very citrusy, but it also smells slightly rummy. And it also smells a little ginger beery. It's kind of it's kind of all in there. It's not ginger forward as let's say like sticking your face into like a ginger root would be or some ginger, freshly brewed ginger tea as I often do, but it's a it's got a nice citrus to it. It's kind of kind of mellowed on the nose. It's a taste though. I'm sipping from the bottom first, so it's probably going to be that like lemon lime sour ginger beer. And then I'll work my way to the top. Take another sip. Oh. As it turns out, this bendy straw is broken. So I'm gonna get another one. This time, it'll be green. And hopefully I didn't break any of it. Ginger beer time. How are all these straws broken? That's incredible. I'm gonna go for it anyway. That is so unpleasant. Nope, doing another one. Third time's the charm, right? I'll do a blue one. Who's my favorite color? How are we doing? All right, well, the bottom of it tastes like ginger beer. I'm not absolutely getting no suction on these things over here. Just, just ain't working. Just, I don't know what's going on. Silly things. So the bottom of it, of what, of what I was able to taste of the bottom of the stormy ocean or, or something is very, very, it's very, very, um, floral i guess I, I don't know the quite the correct way of saying it tastes like ginger it tastes so so gingery but it's got a nice sourness to it like a more forward sourness than let's say just drinking the ginger beer itself would be i would say between the lemon flavor and the lime flavor the lime flavor is most prominent there and i for one like the lime flavor a little more so than i like the lemon flavor because of the sourness component there so the bottom is very very pleasant now, the top of it, which has the rest of the rum on top of it, we'll see how that flavor changes in a hot second. Dom says, is that a good smell or a bad one? They're all kind of good, including the attic smelling one or the underneath the staircase one. Are they broken or you just don't know how to use a straw? All I know how to use a straw, you suck on it, and that's all I was doing, and apparently I broke it. I don't know. I, I don't think I've... I'm going to... After this... I'm gonna try more straws. I'm gonna find one that works and figure out what the problem is. Without trying to poke my eye out, I'm just gonna go for it. Mm. That's nice. Nice tart. Nice tartness. I like that. 
It is ginger beer and those rum notes combining themselves together. It's been a while since I've had Gosling's Black Seal on its own, like kind of standing out like in its own without other cocktail reagents like this, but it does a good job of like darkening the taste of the ginger beer. And by that, I guess, what do I mean there? It's a little more... So going back to my notes about like the attic smell, that, that smell of like an old house, right? It's got a little bit of that, that sour, pungent taste to it too, but now it's a little smoky. It's like, it's like perhaps whoever's house that you were hanging in, perhaps underneath the attic staircase or perhaps just underneath the staircase in general, they might have smoked there just a little bit. They might have scraped off a little bit of the smoke on the wall and just like popped it in there. Not smoke like in like tobacco smoke, smoke like they smoked a lot of mesquite in the inside of the house. I'm, I'm, I'm literally grasping at straws here to try to properly de describe how this tastes. As opposed to just the ginger beer on its own, the black seal rum has a has a has a sugary note to it. It's cane sugary. It's it's not super molassesy here. Not when combined with I guess the really flat ginger beer and the lemon and lime juice here. It's very pleasant. In terms of my own like sour scale, it's not as sour as it could be. It's certainly less sour than the individual lime and lemon juice together. And I like the like the the remaining tart flavor that sticks around with those slightly om almost almost sea-like undertones of, uh, of the, the drink all combined together. When I say slightly sea-like, I, I, I got this like image in my flavor brain that reminded me of the ocean. It reminded me of brine. It's a little brine, it's a little briny. Although I guess not in the salty sense. In every other sense of the word, it's a little briny. It's all right. I wonder if this straw works. Yeah, this totally worked. All right, well, what the heck's going on here? Okay, if I flip it around, that's working. If I undo the bend, oh, oh, these bendy straws all break as soon as I bend them. That's so stupid. That's so dumb. We're gonna test this. This is a science show as well. One straw, not bent at all, a little dented, into glass, give a stir, totally fine, yep. All right, well, apparently the world doesn't want me bending my bendy straws today. Very, very sad. So that's a dark and stormy, dark and stormy night, as things seem to begin over here, at least for the bendy straw community out there. And by the bendy straw community, I mean that little cup of bendy straws over there on my, the right-hand side of the screen that you can't see. Wait, actually, Here's the bendy straw community. They're not all bendy straws, but uh, about half of them are. They're all intermingled with everybody else. It's a it's a happy little community that they have there. It's great. Don't bend the bendy straws. Noted. Apparently we can't. I was planning on bending a lot of straws this evening. So that was our dark and stormy. It's, ra it's rather simple. It can be as complex as adding some lime juice and lemon juice, or it can just be as simple as adding one goslings to the other goslings your ginger beer to your dark rum you could probably do this with other dark rums other rums other like ginger beers ginger tonics um however it wouldn't be a dark and stormy i believe goslings has that trademarked and if you call it a dark and stormy maybe they'll come after you so on your beach day when you're enjoying your tiki beverage watch out goslings is watching I'll put that off to the side. That is very, very sour forward, so I'm going to leave that up to the front. I'm not going to continue drinking that, but it did have a nice hue to it. <laughs> I want to... Actually, what I want to do is I'm going to fill the rest of the back up with water because I want the I want the ship to float up on top. Oh, apparently it... Does it... There we go. There we go. Wait, 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 wait. A little bit, a little bit. There we go. There we go. Aye, aye, Captain. So I, I definitely was not doing that hand signal correctly. It's pleasant, it's sour, it's tart, it's the dark and stormy. And it's alright. And it's got a ship floating on it. And I, I like that. I see you, Captain. So the next cocktail that I have, thinking about 
sailing our ships on the seven seas. Uh, there was a question earlier of what the heck a navy rum is, and to be perfectly honest, I don't know the answer to that question. However, I picked up something calling itself a navy rum the other day, because I thought of boats, I thought of the water, I think of the water, I think of the marines, but when I think of the marines, I think of the navy. And to be fair, I probably could have thought about the boat first and then gone straight to the navy, but marine, like marine biology, you know? Anyway, here's Pusser's rum. Pusser's rum, at least according to the label, is a British Navy original Admiralty rum. As in Admiral, as in of or relating to the Admiral. Um, I'm going to open up the, the cocktail that we have, and we'll dive into that a little bit. The cocktail that Pusser's Rum is most well known for is the Painkiller. Named so for uh, the fact that I believe the, the, Admiral Rum, the Admiral Rum, the Navy Rum, I believe used to be given to the folks aboard the ships, uh, or in the, the, Navy, the Navy ships, um, that would, like, they, more part of their stipend would be a little bit of rum that they would get every single day, or maybe every single week. Again, the details a little beyond we'll do a little bit of research as we move into this, this next cocktail because i feel like with if you know what you're drinking it makes the drink taste that much better or something like that dom says is there games tonight or is it just drinks oh it's just drinks tonight just drinks this evening wednesdays is all about drinky time mondays are all about game time i i did skip last week or the week before i was very very tired i'm sure you understand i will turn to our painkiller and we'll do a little bit of exploration in the hottest of seconds. I believe this one is going to require a shaker. Wow, that is very white today. You are very, very, very dirty. A very dirty whiteboard. A very dirty blackboard. It's a board nonetheless, you know. I think this is just called painkiller. Unless it's the painkiller. I should look in my... I should dig in my notes. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? In my notes, in my notes, in my notes. If I don't put it in my notes, I forget where we are on the stream. Painkiller. Just called Painkiller. And it's on page 47. If you're following along at home, turn to page 47. Painkiller. Painkiller. By Pusser. It's either Pusser's. It's either Pusser's or Pusser's. I really don't know. And the more I say it, the more I feel weird about saying it. Because it just really, really flows out of the mouth, I guess. So a painkiller, I'll give the I'll give the little bit of a, I'll give the little tidbit that we have here from uh, Weston and Sharp themselves. Pusser's rum is known as Navy rum because it was originally distilled for members of the British Royal Navy back in the days when sailors were giving given a daily allotment of rum as part of their serving. It's a dark, rich rum with subtle smokiness, and a painkiller is always a good way to enjoy it. The drink has been Pusser's signature cocktail since the 1970s. The full-bodied rum stands up to the creamy coconut and pineapple flavors in the drink in a way that more subtle rums just simply can't hold up to. Maybe because of the admiralty of the rum. Now, since admiralty is a term that I am not at all familiar with, I was very curious to do a little bit of research to see exactly what the heck that is and explore it with the rest of y'all. Dom says, sweet, sounds like an anime or superhero name, Pussers. Pussers. Pussers admiralty. Admiralty? Pussers rum. Can you buy Pusser's Rum? Yes, you can. What is the strength? Strong. Gunpowder proof rum. Gunpowder proof? This doesn't say gunpowder proof. I don't know what gunpowder proof is. Gunpowder proof is 109 proof. Oh, I see. Making one of the most authentic and historical spirits available today. 55, 54.5% ABV. If it was gunpowder proof. This is not gunpowder proof. This one here is 84 proof, which if you do the math is 42, the meaning of life. I'm actually very curious to see. Let's see what the Pusser's Rum website has to say about their own rum as we dive down. Since the days of wooden ships and iron men, rum made to the Admiralty's specifications. Let's learn more. Liquid history. Since the Actually, I feel like I should be reading this while sipping on a little bit of Pusser's Rum. So I'm going to take one of my little cordial glasses and we're going to do a little, a, little, a little test over here. This may, this may have like... I don't think there's wax on top. I need to figure out how to open this thing. Do I just like... Nope, you don't just... You don't just twist it. I feel like I gotta cut the cap. Oh, there's a little tab. There's a little tab on the side. If you get it just right... It's a fresh bottle. So, oh, Painkiller sounds like an anime or a superhero name. They are... The Painkiller. One who kills pain. In the name of justice! 
take the little foil off. T take the take the foil. Take the take the freaking foil off. You got it. Come on, you got it, bro. You. That was dangerous. Please don't ever cut towards yourself. That was a very bad idea. Very unsafe. Definitely don't show your kids that. It's not coming apart. What in the world? I'm going to cut away from myself this time. All right. I made a little slit. There we go. Kids, don't drink alcohol. Also, don't try this at home. Actually, don't drink alcohol at home if you are under the age of the majority or of your local jurisdiction. Very bad. Very bad idea. Very bad idea. Illegal idea, even. Why would you come apart? What is up with you? It's like the Navy doesn't want me in their bottles of rum. All right, well. Put it in the bucket. It's an honor for the bucket. Plus there's rum. Oh, that was so satisfying. That made the whole experience worth it. Let's see. Supposedly, this has a hint of smokiness to it. It's got a nice dark color to it. Can we check out that dark color? I really need, I, I think, I have an idea. I feel like I need like a plain white part of the cocktail angle so we can just look at the color for things. Because I feel like that's cool. This is my, ooh, that is a nice color. It even looks good against the black background. Nice. Drink responsibly, please. Please drink responsibly. Just, just do whatever is most responsible for your particular uh, situation. Which, if you're a child, is none at all. Anyways, Presto's rum had a nice pop to it. it smells very nice. Ooh. This is the first time that I've smelled a rum other than... No, actually, this is the first time, like, aside from Cachaca, which I thought smelled ripe of banana. This is the first rum that I've had that when I smell it... I get banana. I get like caramelized banana smell because we just did bananas last week and I shot one of them with the propane torch or the butane torch and it smells so similar to this. That's awesome. How does that taste? Ooh. Ooh. I know exactly what they mean when they see a smokiness there. It's got notes of chocolate it's got notes of caramel it is like it's 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 like almost like a cooling sensation almost like like toffee almost this is very tasty it's very tasty indeed media tanner nana the banana the minions gift dude ba -na 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 -na. this is really tasty Ooh, but on the notes of that smoke it it smells the way that like oh it's like almost like a lot like there's a sweetness there that reminds me of a lollipop i'm like not even kidding there this is delectable and and there's even there's even almost like a raisiny note there too so it's it's slightly fruity it's very uh, what's the word to describe candy can, candy i guess like chocolate candies like dark like like sugary candies like that it's very sugary it's very sugary very caney I like that. And there is a bar of chocolate that sits downstairs that Anna got from Guatemala when she went there for one of her, P uh, for one of her PT volunteering things. And it ha it almost tasted like tobacco. It almost tasted like a cigarette. This is cigarette -y. Just a little bit. Just, just a tad. I like that. But not like in terms of the fullness. Like if you had like smoke on your tongue. Anyway, I've rambled on about that. For a while. Liquid history. Poster's rum. Since the days of wooden ships and iron men, to prepare for a face-off, the iron men in their wooden ships found both revival and salvation in Pusser's Rum, as well as companionship for downtown downtime reverie. From the earliest days of the Royal Navy, these foolhardy bravehearts were issued a daily ration or tot of rum by the ship's purser, a word that sailors later coined as Pusser or pusser. 
I hardly know her. That is the only time that I will make that joke this stream. This rum tradition rewarded heroism and eased defeat from 1655 until 1970, when some of the higher-ups decided rum was having too much fun with the sailing men. Blame it on the above-deck skirmishes or the below-deck antics or simply sea legs getting the better of the Jolly Jack Tars, we like to think the Royal Navy just wanted to keep the sea's best-kept secret and the best-tasting one to themselves. So far, I would agree with that. This is great. There's an entire other history on this page. It goes into Black Tot Day, Splice the Main Brace, which I guess is a saying akin to saying, let's have a drink. What is grog? I guess it gets into the info of grog and stuff, a drink that I know nothing about. And there's a whole bunch of history. Actually, there's a ton of history on the PussersRum.com website. All about the craft, the award-rimming rum, the, the award rum itself. Rimming awards since... What was it, 1655? 1650, incredible. Um, and other stuff as well. This is tasty. I like this rum. I don't wanna go too crazy with it. I will try to measure that into the drink that we're making, which in this case is a painkiller. The painkiller is like the drink that Pusser's goes by. When people think of Pusser's rum, apparently they think of the painkiller. And exactly the, the reason exactly for that, I feel like in the in the context of a Navy ship, right? Maybe you've got like scurvy or something else painful. If you're fighting in a battle, maybe you were shot by a cannonball. And the only thing that you could ask for right now is another tot of rum. Dare I say two full ounces or 59 milliliters of rum, um, which I don't exactly know what a tot is equivalent to, but if I were in pain on a ship in the middle of the ocean with my Navy, Navy comrades, Admiral comrades, I'd ask for more rum. Maybe I'd take the rum from my comrades. I don't know. What kind of guy, what kind of sailor am I? I really don't know. A painkiller is made in a shaken manner with ice cubes with two ounces or 59 milliliters of Pusser's rum, four ounces or about, that's like, let's say, 108, 118 milliliters of pineapple juice, uh, an ounce or 30 milliliters of cream of coconut, and an ounce or 30 milliliters of orange juice. So we're going to need to juice some orange juice, we're going to need to get some cream of coconut, and we're going to need to get some pineapple juice. So I'll get those things together, and we'll start a uh, mixing. Dom says, Grog is a popular drink in Lord of the Rings for the orcs to drink. I feel like I've definitely heard so so my buddy Lycos Lore, who was on stream the other day. I see I see him a lot. It's great. He bought himself a new um, orc army in Warhammer because uh, he really likes the 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 orc army army I believe. And I feel like I have definitely heard him talk about, or maybe not him specifically, but like in the context of orcs talking about grog, like grog, whether it be a name or an actual drink that they are imbibing, which I would imagine it could be both. Maybe you're actually drinking the friend, in which case, hmm. In any case, I'm gonna need some cream of coconut, I'm gonna need some pineapple juice. So I got a couple of cans of pineapple juice over here, I've also got um, cream of coconut, which uh, apparently was in my refrigerator in this inconspicuous can. I promise this is cream of coconut. Um, so listen to that sound. It can't possibly be anything else. Um, what else do we need? We also needed orange juice. So I need to get my juicer of annoyance and um, juice some oranges with it. So um, I'm going to grab myself an orange. Well, we'll juice the orange juice first because uh, this is just going to be a thing. I think a piece of my... Um, I feel like... I think the some of the other later cocktails actually use pieces of the oranges at the garnish. So I'm only going to squeeze the one orange and hopefully get an ounce of orange juice out of it. Dom asks, did you know that Lo-Fi Girl now has a partner? Oh yeah, Hi-Fi Boy, Synthwave Boy. Oh, I'm very aware that I've now bookmarked and completely downloaded the entire Synthwave playlist. And because the Lo-Fi Girl music is what I use on this stream, at some point I want to do like space theme and have Synthwave music in the background. That's going to be awesome. Actually, come to think of it, next week, next week is May 5th, is it not? May the May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Oh my god, we should totally do Star Wars cocktails next week. That is that would be cool. That would be cool, yo. I, I'm so I love that idea. I got to start planning for that. That sounds awesome. I'm going to take my orange. I'm going to do the special squeezing technique by just giving it a little bit of a very very rough massage because when you're in my massage parlor, it's all about navy strength rums, Everclear and slapping citrus and slapping turmeric at least in some cases. Anyway, I slapped it. Now I'm going to try to get some juice out of it. 
And eventually I will have a better juicer, uh, but until then, let's let's just all, we can all be patient together. But yeah, if we did Star Wars cocktails next week, then I could have the synthwave music on in the background, um, which isn't, it's it's not a super exhaustive playlist, but there's a solid couple of hours on there. It's, it's wonderful. I love it. It's called, on Spotify, it's Chill Synthwave is the playlist because I can see it on my screen over there. And it's got a little, I think that's a blue um, double eighth note thing going on with that. It's, um, it's great. All right, that's been juice. Feed it to the bucket. And now let's get this other guy. I also have a sticker on my hand. Yeah. I've sent you a few Star Wars cocktails. Yo, Dom, thank you for that. I will do my best to make sure that those make an appearance. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have. You know, you in past tense. You have definitely sent me Star Wars cocktails before. I think I was looking. I think the only Star Wars cocktails that I have in my recipe book uh, originated from TikToks that you've shared with me, as well as one of the one of the nerdy books that I have over here. The Geeky Bartender has, I think, a couple of Star Wars things. And I, I brought this idea. Uh, I think I know uh, Disney has Star Wars cocktails now, too. So maybe we'll take some inspiration from Galaxy's Edge. All right, I have a sticker on my finger, which I'm going to now put on, I don't know, I'll put it on my phone. There we go. Here, here's the cocktail angle, and um, here's the sticker. Bye, everybody. Oh, that didn't work that well. Oh, in any case, get that off. Sticker. Nice. And when I need a single ounce of that, everything needs to go into a shaker. So let's grab a shaker. I'm going to grab, oh, dear, just one shaker, please. Um, I did mention the other day that I realized that the supply of apparatus that we have at this bar is a little low especially when we do an entire cocktail stream where most if not all of the drinks are all shaken except for the first one you need more than one shaker so uh working on it tax returns coming in improvements are underway so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put i'll put all my liquid reagents in there first and then i'll do and then i'll add the ice there dom asks if i should do should do what oh that we should do a tatooine cocktail i will make sure that i write that down on my board so i do not forget tatooine Ta to cocktail for Star Wars for Star Wars Day. It's gonna be great, dude. I love it when like nerds do things. It's great, and I am a nerd, and I do things. So I'll put all my liquid reagents into this cocktail shaker. I don't want to add the ice just yet because ice, when it sits in the container, is going to warm up. It's going to come up to temperature. It's going to dribble off a little bit of its wetness. And I don't I don't have a second container to put all the liquid reagents into first and then strain out the water later. So I'll just put the ice in last. It's not technically at the temperature. The whole cooling mechanics there, at least according to a physicist that I've never met, um, is going to be a little off. But whatever. I mean, like, a bunch of cocktails this evening. So I, if you don't mind... I don't mind. If you do mind, please let me know. I will never know unless you speak up. So first what we're going to put in there is we have our orange juice. So I'm just going to do the full ounce of orange juice first. Grab my measuring majigger. And let's put, hopefully, an entire ounce of OJ in there. Hopefully I got at least an ounce from this orange. I don't like this shaker, or this juicer. There we go. That's a full ounce of about 30 milliliters of OJ. A few ounces of OJ, it's all I need. Or something. Dom says, I mean, the planet is in almost every Star Wars. That's true. It is a very, in terms of planets visited by the Star Wars friends, it is a very prolific one, a very promiscuous planet for our planet goers. So in addition to one ounce of orange juice, we need an ounce of coconut cream. I've got coconut cream in this conspicuous can because I, uh, I kept it in my refrigerator. It solidified, so I ran it under hot water for a good 15, 15 minutes. Excuse me. I'm tasting the goslings now, and uh, the label on the can came off. So, uh, and it's very, very, it's very, very, it's kind of like, it's pressurized. It's like all around the edge, so I'm going to let some air in. Hopefully not make a mess. There we go. Completely depressurized. Take that off the top. Nice. Excellent. I'm going to toss that into my recycling bin. It's not the bucket. It's a completely separate bucket. It's the bucket's sister. Recycle Chon, I guess. And I'll add a full ounce of coconut cream, cream of coconut. It's got some bits of the oil in there that have kind of congealed a little bit because it's, it's been sitting around for a little while. But it's also got this wonderful, like, viscous juice that's like inexplicably coconut. I love 
love coconut cream. We actually have some friends coming over this weekend for a game day, and we're deciding to make pina coladas. So this is gonna come in handy. I actually, I ordered one of those, oh my God, you ever see like those, um, excuse me, those pineapple cores that you like drill into the pineapple? I got one, we're gonna see if it works. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. All right, so we've got all of our coconut cream in there. And it's all over my finger, so please don't look at me for a moment. Anyway, um, sorry, not sorry about that. Uh, I need to. I want to conserve this cream of coconut, so I think the best thing for me to do is to put it in one of my spare containers. I'm an absolute mess. I'm gonna go get a spare container. I want to make sure I conserve this cream of coconut because it's gonna come in handy elsewhere. Delicious. It tastes so good! It's super good! Let me grab this container and that'll be the one that I use because I like the size of it. It's a lot, I don't have to go all the way downstairs now. Random question, Dom asks, do you prefer swimming in summer or skiing in winter? I've actually never gone skiing before. And uh, my, my buddy, my buddy, I actually have two of my close friends who have gone skiing before, and I've requested at least one of them to uh, show me how to ski. I mean, my brother lives up in Vermont, so uh, eventually we could do some skiage. Could be fun. That is... Wow. I used just enough of that coconut cream to con completely fill up this jar. Cool. I get to conserve it, because I can actually close this container. I cannot close the other one. So, awesome. That's great. Wow. Spare jam containers. Really come in handy at a time like this. I'll put you back in, the, back in my cooler. Cool, yo. I love it when things conserve well. There we go. I have a little bit of cream of coconut on me, but, you know, clean as you go. That's the rule. So you have an ounce of orange juice in there and an ounce of cream of coconut uh, in our cocktail shaker right now. We're also going to add four full ounces or about, that's like 120, 119, 118-ish milliliters of pineapple juice. Um, this can contains six fluid ounces. You give that a little bit of a shake, shake up your pineapple juice. You're also supposed to shake up your coconut cream as well, which I think I remember doing, but I don't exactly remember. So anyways, four full ounces. I'll open up the pineapple juice and I will pour it into the other side of my measuring the jigger two full times into the two ounce side. If you were using like a metric jigger, you might be measuring in units of 50 milliliters, in which case it's actually a little, that's, that's quite a lot less. So it'd be 100 milliliters as opposed to that, which would be more the equivalent of, see, minus 20, minus two thirds of an ounce just about. So four, two thirds, minus three and a third mathematical dude so i put four full ounces in there i'll take the rest of the pineapple juice which will most likely come back again later on and then we had two ounces of our pussers our pussers rum however much left i have in my cordial is like less than an ounce so i'm just gonna have to go get more nice i love that i love the the pop of that cork that sounds awesome Pour that into our shaker. Then I'll go grab some ice and we'll give that sucker a shake. I'm gonna leave you on the side over here because I like you, I think you're cool. What else do we need? So I'm also planning the garnish out over here. I see a little bit of bits of the orange. I see some straws, I see a cherry, I see an umbrella. It's gonna be easy. And I think in a shaker filled with ice cubes, shake vigorously, strain the contents of the shaker into a goblet filled with crushed ice. We are apparently going to need some crushed ice. So let me put this off to the side for a moment. Do a little bit of cleanup, clean as you go. I'm getting more jiggers as well, so that should be less of a problem going forward. I made a mess, just a slight mess, but a mess nonetheless. A messeth nonetheless. Double it and give it to the next guy. Double, double and give it to the, I could, I could. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, the next guy is, uh, <laughs> it's still me. I, I am the next guy. Indeed. All right, so I'll put my jigger off to the side. Take a little, take a little swig. Take a swig of your wow wow. And now what we'll need is Cameron lost his train of thought. Oh my god, we need crushed ice. You know what that means. I'm gonna grab my safety goggles. I'm gonna put my microphone a little bit over there, 
I'm gonna grab myself some cheesecloth. I'm gonna go ham. We're gonna go absolutely ham. I don't need too much of it, at least I don't think I do. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna grab two full ice cubes from here, and I'm gonna go grab my cheesecloth, which is, you guessed it, conveniently placed in the closet, which is only ever so far over here. Hello, cheesecloth. Eventually I'll get myself, oh, you know what I should get? I should get myself a Lewis bag. That'd be, that'd be nice. That'd probably be easier on the equipment that I adorn myself with. That'd be a good idea, right? So to make crushed ice, it's actually very simple. First, Grab yourself some ice. Grab yourself some sort of bag to put it into. I use some cheesecloth over here. It's kind of easy. I'm going to take two ice cubes. I feel like this isn't the only cocktail that is going to warrant crushed ice this evening. So uh, I'm going to make a little bit of it. And we're just going to fill up our glass with it. It says a goblet specifically. And I got... I've got goblet equivalents. So take your ice. Wrap it in your bag or place it in your Lewis bag and get yourself a mallet. If you don't happen to have a mallet, uh, you could use something harder. For example, a, uh, a large wrench that you found on the street of Philadelphia. I have a bigger wrench, but I just, just don't feel like it today. So instead, we're just going to do this guy here. Uh, sound warning, I'm going to be banging my bar with a wrench. I should not be using the crescent side of this wrench, otherwise it hooks onto things and breaks it. That's okay. I'm the only one at the bar today, so anybody anybody who has to deal with the consequences of whatever happens is me. There we go. Give it a little flippy, flip to the other side of the wrench, and keep on it going. Wow, that ice just wanted to get away. <laughs> but you can't escape from me. At least, not this time. Where's the rest of the ice? There you are. Put you back in the bag. Back in the bag. This ice is being difficult today. Wow. Being difficult, aren't you? It's like you don't want to be crushed. There we go. I would say that is adequately crushed. After you're finished taking out your anger, take off your goggles, put away your murder weapon, and uh, continue with your regularly scheduled programming. Dom says, this was not what I meant by double it. Two ice cubes, one bag. Doesn't feel like a very good YouTube video. Anyways, so I have my crushed ice. I need to get more ice and put it into my shaker because it's not what we're using the, the crushed ice for. I'm gonna give this thing a little shake. Let me grab... I'm gonna grab one of my spherical ice cubes, because I can. Spherical ice cubes and small ice cube. It's technically not a spherical ice cube at all, because it is in fact in the shape of a spherical. Don't know why I said it, I just did. Grab my shaker, put, I put ice, one ice, two ice, and my little spherical cube that I completely put my hands all over. Top this thing off. We'll prepare ourselves a container. And uh, We'll go for it. I don't need to wear goggles for this one, unless this container decides to completely break on me. This is a painkiller that we're shaking up right now. I hope my glasses don't fall off. I feel like it's cooler if I do this with my glasses on. Yeah. Thank you. Now in this book, for some reason, every time that it instructs you to shake a cocktail, it says to shake for 20 to 30 seconds. I don't think that's entirely necessary. So I'm just gonna shake it until I feel like stopping. Now, let's get ourselves a goblet. The closest glass that I have to a goblet is probably gonna be this guy over here. I don't exactly know how many milliliters this thing holds. Um, so we're just gonna, we're gonna find out. We're gonna see what happens. Let's bring our cocktail angle over. Move our pusters out of the way. How are you? Here you are. There's our goblet. Our goblet here. We're also going to pop it in with a garnish. The garnish that we're going to use here is a maraschino cherry and a an orange slice stabbed with an umbrella. Let me go get my maraschino cherries. Got a couple of them. I'll do these ones, which are for some reason upside down. Don't know why. Who knows? 
I'll get those on standby and I'll pre-prepare the other orange, which uh, must be utilized. It is sitting at the bottom of my, I only bought two oranges. Huh. That, that might be a problem, but I need it in a quarter. So I'll cut in half. Actually, it's an eighth. If you're, we're talking spheres here, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna cut it in quarters. And then I'll take this and I will cut it in an eighth. There we go. That's that. And I will take the rest of this orange and hopefully come back to it later. When I put it, where? I'll put it back in my little citrus thing over here. Don't let me forget about that orange. That's, that'd be a bad, bad idea if I forgot about it. Fuck it. Have that. And a maraschino cherry. Go in there and grab one. Oh, I can just grab them with my fingers. Nope, that's not working like I intended it to. Anyway, I got one. Cameron goes back to have fun with his fingers again, or whatever sits on top of his fingers. How professional. I know, I know. Anyway, I know y'all have been sitting on the cocktail. Whoops, I know y'all have been on the cocktail angle. I am aware of that. Because now it's time for the fun. All right, we'll take our crushed ice and we'll put it into our glass. Um, if you had a proper bag for this, it would probably be easier, but uh, I don't, so. I'm gonna try to allow y'all to see what the heck is happening over here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Place crushed ice into glass. Or at least try your bestest. Fill it up with crushed ice. Yeah, okay. That, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's got crushed ice. I feel like it needs more though. Do I have a lot more? Do I have more in here? That's really all the crushed ice that I have. Well, I'm bits and pieces over here. I guess I should have crushed up more ice. Hmm. That's okay. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. If we need more crushed ice later, we'll go grab that. Let's take our cocktail and we'll strain it in. Oh yeah, that totally worked. Oh yes. Oh wow, that was just enough. Like that's perfect, a perfect amount of liquid. That is awesome. That looks so good. My goodness, y'all. That looks delicious. I need to grab myself a cocktail umbrella. Uh, I'll do a green one. I want the green one this time. And then I will pop this lad up. Kinda. Where's the, there we go. Now you can see it. Now you can see the cocktail umbrella. And what I'll do is I'll stab. I'm gonna de-stem the cherry. I don't want that. Over there. I will stab first part of the cherry. Now like so, pop it on the back, and I will take the eighth of the orange that I have left. Put it like this, and we will, I'll pop a little slit in the side so it can sit upon the glass. And hopefully it doesn't overflow because of the amount, the sheer amount of awesomeness that is like emanating from this glass. Whoops. Hey, it's Anna. You can see Anna now. Yeah, yeah, you can. The cocktail angle's on, baby. Sometimes she sneaks on the stream. No. Sometimes she do. She denies it, but I can confirm it. It's okay. I love her. This is our painkiller. It is the drink that kills the pain. Doesn't cure the pain, murders it. Absolute pain homicide. That's not how that works. It is not how that works, says the doctor or almost doctor in the room. I'm going to take a quick little pick of this. It's so cute looking. I love this cocktail. I was actually really looking forward to this one because I wanted to try I wanted to try it with the um, the coconut rum. So very delicious, very fun. She do been do she do be sneaking. I agree. She do be do be sneaking indeed. Like Scooby Dooby Doo sneaking around. Oh, our boat is capsizing. No, don't. Oh, it's so lopsided. If anybody out there needs a boat constructed, please don't call me. It will die. It will capsize, you will all perish. It is, it's it's terrible for everybody involved actually, including me. Cause um, I feel like every every certification I have, which is none, would be revoked. One day. No vacation. No vacation, no, vac no, no certification. No vacation either. No vacation for crime doers. In any case, I'll clean up that shaker in a hot second. So I should call you to make a boat. Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> Listen, if you like playing with fire, I'm your guy. Oh, I need a straw for this because all this stuff is really difficult to drink. I'm gonna take a yellow straw that, actually, you know what? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this guy. It's a paper straw. 
and it looks cool because I like the way that this paper straw looks. The painkiller. To create a painkiller, you need to combine two ounces of Pusser's rum, four ounces of pineapple juice, one ounce of cream of coconut, and one ounce of orange juice together. Shake it up, put some crushed ice in there, and garnish it how you please. Oh, how does it smell? I'm supposed to smell things first. Oh, rum and coconut. Rum, coconut, and pineapple. It smells tropical. It is not, it is not quite pina colada-y. Oh, but it smells so good. Actually, I'm getting some nice bright notes from the maraschino cherry that's hanging nearby. That is an excellent aroma additive. Mmm. That's nice. It's very, very nice. Every, oh, there's a, mmm. Oh, there's something else there. This tastes like, you know how I was picking up on those toffee notes before the, the, the in the Pusser's rum? It tastes like toffee. Like, like you ever have like a Heath bar? Like minus all the chocolatey bits about the Heath bar? This tastes like toffee. It's, it's a, it's a rum and pineapple coconut forward drink that is just, it's so smooth. It's nice and cool. It's got an excellent texture to it. It looks awesome, not just because of the garnish. Pat myself on the back for something that Weston and Sharp put in their book that I just copied. So, pat the pat the book on the back. This is delightful. I like I had this thought. I had two thoughts actually. One thought was reminding myself of the time I got really really blasted at a sandbar up in Maryland, I think, and had to be uh, Ubered home, to which I made a mess in the Uber. I was very, very drunk that day. Not one of my prouder moments, but what hit me was a Mai Tai. And when I drink a nice, finely made tiki drink, I get flashbacks to that moment every single time, probably because it was a little traumatizing, albeit fun in the moment. But this is giving me that vibe. I also, oh my God, I have another memory. Uh, pina coladas made in America, probably the year 2017, maybe 2018. I, it was a, wow, wild time. No, just kidding. Let's just say those years. I didn't say those years. Definitely 2020, for sure. Definitely 2020 during the pandemic. This is super duper pleasant. This is an excellently, well. this is a well-crafted, this is a very, very well-crafted drink. The ratios are all delicious. And, and those, those notes of toffee are now melding with, there's four full ounces of pineapple juice in there. It's melding with that sweet tropical tartness of the pineapple. It's not really that tart. It's a little bit tart, but it's also got this wonderful sweetness coming from that cream of coconut. And again, the texture is, there's a nice like foam up on top because of the, the coconut cre cream of coconut doing its magic there. It's, it's like, like that very mild coconut flavor that I just, Oh, I, I love this. This is so tasty. The tiki drinks, I really, really like tiki drinks. I like rum. I like coconut. I like pineapple. I love all this stuff all put together in a wonderful little bundle. So this is, this is a dangerous stream. Um, I'm actually kind of glad that we started with the dark and stormy because uh, I'm honestly not too big a fan of that. But this... Oh my god, yeah, that is so good. I love the way this is a painkiller by the way i don't know if i mentioned yeah it says that on the board y'all get the idea it's very very good um and honestly it's not super duper complicated to make either all you need to do is make sure you get your cream of coconut your pineapple juice and this particular rum for it i feel like when i tasted the pusters rum earlier it was unlike the flavor of any rum that I had had previously, it was very caramel forward, it was very toffee forward, as opposed to a lot of the dark rums that I have, usually, for example, a Myers rum has a very strong molasses note to it. It's very, it's very, it's a little astringent. It's a very deep, almost coffee-like flavor. This is almost chocolatey. This is almost like straight up, like uh, those caramel cookies that you can get. It's very good. And it goes excellently with the cream of coconut, OJ, and pineapple juice. So uh, I feel like if there are other rums out there that have it, like if it evokes that taste of caramel or toffee, it would probably make a good stand-in for uh, for the painkiller here. And also apparently there's a gunpowder proof Puster's rum out there, which is like 100 and I think it was like 109, if it's 54.5% alcohol. I don't know why my mind specifically remembers that number, but that's 109 proof. Uh, I wonder how that would be in a painkiller. 
That'll really kill your pain. That, that'll just... Pain? Fizzle. Like, I don't feel good, Mr. Stark. Just out of here. Or just spike it with Everclear. That's just, that's just, the, that's the full Thanos snap. Just, whoosh. Half your pain, gone. Actually, two Thanos slaps, but all your pain. Gone. My god, that is so dangerous. That is really, really tasty. so good oh my god i say about the water the water is also so good there is nothing quite like setting your taste buds and mouth ablaze and then just like guzzling some hydration i'm telling you there is no greater pleasure when drinking alcohol than drinking water with it i'm telling you if you as the individual for every shot that you have you drink a full cup of water you are going to be on top of the world it's it's a completely different mixological experience i'm telling you it's not even about the safety it's just brings the whole experience together hydrate or dihydrate or dihydrate your pain with a painkiller enhanced by the water that you guzzle Prevent a hangover. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup over here. The, the, the painkiller stuff is over. I think I've, I've rambled on about this particular drink long enough. It is, it's, it's good. That's coming back with me. That's good. Water, drink. Wine, repeat. That's how I usually do it. That is a good idea. I'm telling you. Excuse me. Oh my God. Um. For the most part, I wouldn't say that I have a lot of alcohol very often, but when I do, when I when I take the tent, when I take the when I take the train to to, to Alk Town, I guess um, I am I will wind up coming home and to try and prevent my hangover. It's not not necessarily a perfect process every single time. What I will do is I will take one of those full a full bottle of water, and before I get to bed. I need to drink that full bottle of water. If I can stand it, I try to do one and a half, uh, one and a half of those water bottles. Um, I definitely have to get up to pee in the middle of the night, but that's probably a good thing because that's your body just flushing out all the toxins. It uh, makes the more, it makes the morning that much better. So we had, oh, we did a painkiller. That was good. Let me grab myself a uh, coaster. I keep them over here now, it seems, and uh, pop this back with the bartender because the painkiller is so far my favorite drink of the evening and that was really really good i'm actually really happy that i went out of my way to so when I, I went to the liquor store yesterday and i was buying ingredients for the stream and for the most part actually all everything that i bought for this stream specifically was rums we got uh, an age type a, a, a jamaican aged rum uh, i filled up on my bacardi white rum and i grabbed this pusters rum and i grabbed what else did i grab there was something else that's new in this bar what was it I also bought some ginger liqueur, but that's not actually making an appearance this evening. And I bought something else too, and I just, oh, amaretto. I filled up on amaretto. That, that's what it was. Um, and and then one of the reasons I wanted to do that was because I wanted to explore more of the rums out there. I feel like I've compared rums before, and they used to be the biggest number of bottles in my particular, in my liquor cabinet by base spirit was dominated by rum once upon a time. But I did so many rum drinks, and I didn't do drinks of other kind. I just did so much rum stuff, and I completely ran out of rum. Like, I'm, pretty, I'm down to, like, some of my last drops of rum, so I had to fill back up again, to the point where I was completely out of Bacardi, which was unfortunate. Dom says, I just drink a hydration packet before sleeping, wait 45-ish minutes if he can, and then he'll sleep, which is also a good idea. I've heard, I have friends who use this product called Liquid IV. I've never tried it personally, but they swear by it. So, if, they, if, they, if you're looking for the hangover cure, um, you could reduce your alcohol intake. You could also try Liquid IV. You could also try hydrating. You could try to eat a large meal before you go out, but to each their own. Oh, Dom starts to, oh, yeah. <laughs> Why is the rum always gone? Oh my God, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I love this book so much for a variety of reasons, but one of the reasons I love Tiki Drinks, Tropical Cocktails for the Modern Bar by Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp is because in the front of this book, it says, dedicated to everyone who knows where the rum has gone. So on point for a Tiki Drinks book. So on point. Really though, where'd where rum at? Where'd a rum gone? I don't really know. It's in my tummy. 
it's in my tummy now at least and it's great so let's see two cocktails down so far painkiller dark and stormy dark and stormy can be complicated it might not be uh painkiller good dangerously so very dangerously good and i love that so let me do a couple of flips through my cocktail collection of planned recipes this evening and see what else we have uh, set up for y'all this one is going back to the cream of coconut this one there that's a nice looking oh that one's green we're gonna do that one it's green i like that one dom says they're like 20 bucks on amazon and have more than a few different flavors yeah they do Oh, the, IV, the liquid IV, the 20 bucks on Amazon. I was I was thinking, I was like, I was responding to that positively. And I was like, we do, we do. What are we talking about? I have to remember, this was a couple of, liquid IV, that was the one. Drink it, electrolytes and hydration. So the next cocktail that we're gonna cover this evening is it's green and it's got a cool little, it's got a, it's got a really cool garnish going on here, at least from what I can see on the picture. So I'm gonna flip to that and uh, we'll see what happens. I honestly picked a lot of the drinks this evening out of this book purely based off of the uh purely based off of the garnish that i saw on top of it I'm trying to get better at the garnish game I'm trying to make these drinks look, look a little more pretty um it's cool one day i i legitimately do now that i've done that like, i've been doing mixology for a little while i have aspirations to be able to go out and like bartend for people uh, i don't really feel like i have a very very nice engineering job right now so i don't intend to like work at a bar or anything like that but like i love the idea of like like hosting cocktail parties or like being able to bartend at people's cocktail parties, it feels like it'd be a lot of fun. And it's something that I'm gonna wind up improving upon this craft anyways. So, and uh, if, if it warrants itself, maybe I'll go out and get like, I don't know, a certified or something, get, get my bartender's license and uh, have some fun. It seems that the laundry just finished. I don't know if anybody could hear that. In any case, so the next drink that we have is one called Aku, or it's AKU, AKU, with a space in between the two AKUs. I'm going to guess that that is pronounced Aku Aku or Aku Aku. Aku Aku. I'm going to go Aku Aku. Or actually, I'm going to have the internet pronounce it for me, because uh, if I'm going to wind up spitting, if I'm going to be spitting these language prophecies, I should know how to say it. Aku Aku pronunciation. How to pronounce Aku? What does Aku Aku actually say according to the internet? Abuga Buga or Whole Buga as it turns out. I don't like, I don't know your, I don't like your thinking there, lad Bible. That doesn't really seem correct there. How do you pronounce Aku Aku? Crash Bandicoot. Oh! Aku Aku. Aku Aku. Let me just pronounce Aku from Samurai Jack. Aku Aku. Or Uka? No. I don't really know. Apparently, Aku Aku is a video game reference. Crash Bandicoot, to be exact. To be exact, maybe like the original. I know there's like a talking tiki face in that game. Anyways, this one's called Aku Aku, and it's got apricot brandy in it. More up in a little bit. I just realized if this were like an actual television show, this would be the part that we cut the break. You know, we cut the commercial. You know, commercial time. And if I ran ads on this channel. This is where I'd be doing the ad breaks. Um, however, I don't do that anymore. I tried. I tried that ad schedule thing for like a solid minute or so, or like a day, like a couple streams or so. I hated it. I hate Twitch ads. It just, it just, it, it disrupts the experience for literally everybody. So uh, I don't care about your ads, Twitch. Um, I recanted on that. Dom says it's the brown mask that shows up and indicates your health. Oh, that's Aku Aku. Cool. I've learned something today. Aku Aku According to Weston and Sharp, Aku Aku is a cocktail that will taste much more familiar than it sounds. This refreshing, minty cocktail is reminiscent of a mojito, but with a more subtle sweetness and a bit more complexity. The fresh mint leaves are shaken with the rest of the ingredients as the drink is prepared, but they are not strained out, which gives the drink an unusually colorful look. So, as the description implies, we're actually going to use some mint leaves in this that gets shaken with the entire cocktail itself and not strained out. None of it gets strained out. You just kind of pour it in your glass. And because uh, I, I saw the, the, the look of the drink, it looked very, very colorful. It had a very nice garnish on top of it. So, that's what we're going to go for. I'm going to put the Pusser's Rum away because uh, that's not the rum that we're playing with this time. Instead, what we'll need is uh, we'll get some white rum, some apricot brandy, lime juice, pineapple juice, simple syrup, and mint leaves. And we're going to shake 
everything together and fill with more crushed ice. So we're gonna have to crush more ice. And because I ran out of my crushed ice, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna need to make more. I feel I have a fear that this stream is going to end because I ran out of ice. That that would be very, very interesting. That would be a first, honestly. So the first thing that I'll need is my Bacardi White. Just picked up a new bottle. Excellent. I'm gonna need apricot brandy, which I believe I have. I moved that around. Is it still in the right location? Nope, it's right here. Ap nope, that's peach brandy. Where's my apricot brandy? Ooh. Cam, where'd you put your apricot? There you is. Jay Quinn's apricot, apricot brandy. I need my lime juice, so I'm gonna have to get my lime back out here. Where did I put that lime? Oh, I use it as a garnish. <laughs> that, there's our lime, it's right there. And I need the pineapple juice back, but I have the rest of that on the table over here. Got some pineapple juice. Grab a new lime, catch it from the sky, as our friend Nick Hamilton says. Simple syrup and some mint leaves. I'm gonna grab both of those. And I'm gonna need crushed ice, so. I got mint leaves, grab some simp syrup. That's not simp syrup. This is simp syrup. Although, the simp has been promptly washed off the uh, container itself, so I had to taste it earlier in order to figure out what it is exactly what I was talking about. All right, so we're gonna need another shaker. Uh, lucky for us, I decided to clean up the shaker that I just used. Uh, there's only two shakers. There are only two. I need to get more, and I plan to. So, unless somebody wants to like, can you like, make your own shaker? Like, is that a thing? Like, could somebody create a shaker? I guess you could. You just get a pint glass. You can get a pint glass engraved. I guess you can get any piece of metal or so. That's an idea. You could customize it. Customize it for the stream. An X-Bar brand shaker or something. That could be cool. I need to cut up a lime. I need some lime juice. But first, we're going to process the lime. Just give it a little... Yeah. Now, please note, if you're trying to process the citrus like this, if you whack it on your bar, you're going to release some of the oils. If you're using the peel, don't do that. Or like do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not your mother. Cut that lime. I'm going to need some of that lime. Put this off to the side. So in our cocktail shaker, which I have sitting on the floor. Hello. We're going to add one full ounce of white rum. So let me grab my measuring majigger. Grab our white rum, and I'm going to put it into the thing. Fresh bottle. Hear that crack. Hear that crack, smell that crack. Don't actually smell that crack. That, no, don't do that actually. That's nasty. That's called food art, AKA fart, as we've pointed out earlier. A full ounce or 30 milliliters of uh, white rum. If you're making this with a milliliter, with a, with a, with a metric jigger, then you'll probably be measuring in units of 25 milliliters per ounce instead of 30 milliliters per ounce. This was 30 mil. That's just what I'm working with. But I provide the conversion because I know that there are people who drink all around the world and literally everyone else except for Djibouti and one other place uses the metric system, which I think is a far, far superior measuring system. We also need two ounces of apricot brandy. I've got Jay Quinn's. It's apricot flavored brandy. The best one that we got. So that's what we go with. Two full ounces of that, or about, uh, whew, mathematics please, 59 milliliters. I accidentally poured a little bit in my thing already. So I will dial back, dial back just a little bit on my preparation here. You know, it occurs to me that I feel like a question would come up that, you know, if I'm not gonna drink the entire cocktail, why am I measuring out full entire cocktail drinks themselves if I'm not gonna drink them all? Uh, it's for the experience, you know? You could technically like ratio down all of these drinks, but you don't get the full glass experience. It's not like I can buy like half size glasses, like hurricane glasses or otherwise. I want them to look pretty. I also wanna make them, I just want, I want it to feel more authentic. Also, cause like, if you're here for a show, why wouldn't you wanna see the full cocktail? Like I'm the one paying for all the liquor here. So might as well give a full and unadulterated show where we can. You need a single ounce of our lime juice. I think I might actually need a full other lime for this, but we'll see about that. So got my little, ow, whack my fingers on it. Flip this guy over. Squeeze some lime juice in it. I realized too the other day that so I'm doing a little bit of uh, doing a little bit of reordering 
and reorganizing of the bar that you see back here. A couple of improvements underway, I promise you that. And a piece of that is trying to get more bang for my buck on this bar. I realize that even though that I am even though I am a small individual, there's not a lot of space that I get to work with on this bar. As far as bars go, this is not a super duper large bar. There's the microphone sitting here right here in my face. There's my keyboard and stuff over here. I'm going to try to change things up a little bit. There will be an angle change as well as some other improvements. Also to kind of make way for more people because as more guests pop their way onto the bar with an X studio screen, um, I want to make sure that people are comfortable, you know? I am definitely going to need another lime. So luckily, got plenty of limes. I like to throw them around. I like to throw them behind my back and drop them on the floor. Working on my flare tending as well. Not very good at it. Everybody's got to start somewhere. There's like just shy of an ounce of lime juice. So I'm going to get the rest of it all up there. I also need one half of this lime for the garnish, which we will get to. Hold your horses. Full ounce of lime juice. There we go. And I think what I need to do is I'm going to need, I don't know how I'm going to figure this out. So. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. I'll take this one ounce or 30 milliliters of lime juice and add that to my shaker. And I'm going to take this whole apparatus of cutting and stuff and put it over here. There we go. There's a full lime in there. I'll clean that table later. We also need half an ounce of pineapple juice. I need to get my jigger back. Before you pour your pineapple juice, juice, give it a little shake. It's gonna wind up settling. It's got particulates in it. Half an ounce, pineapple juice. The backhand, the backhand way. I'll put that up to the side. There's, there's more pineapple juice. There's still more pineapple juice in there. That's great. We also need a quarter ounce of simple syrup. That's about seven milliliters. I do the math for you because I care. And it's fun. It showcases my big brain. Everything is in there, and the only thing missing now is 10 whole mint leaves. So luckily for, uh, I actually, I, I went to the store today to grab our cocktail reagents, and I wasn't able to, I really, I used to have, let me back up a second. Whoop. I used to have a mint plant. Uh, the name was Menthol Man, the non binary mint plant, and uh, unfortunately, I killed it. I somehow killed a mint plant, so I don't have a mint plant anymore. So now I buy my mint from the store. I've got... Nature's Promise Organic Mint from Giant. It is Nature's Promise that it is organic. Nature's Promise that it is mint. No GMO ingredients, no prohibited synthetic ingredients, and no prohibited chemical pesticides. Every single one of them has an asterisk next to it. Please take that into consideration before, before trusting nature with their promise. I need 10 full mint leaves. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna find a stock and we'll count. She loves me. She loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. He loves me. That he does. I can uh, overcounted. I put 11 mint leaves in there, but it's fine. We're, we're all friends here. He does, in fact, love me, which is great. I'm really happy to hear that, actually. Put our mint away. It's all in our shaking apparatus. All we need to do is add some ice to our shaker. We also need to create some crushed ice. So I'm going to do a little bit. <laughs> There's not a lot of space up here on this bar. So they put things back in their place. I'll grab our safety equipment again, and we will create some more cashed, crushed ice as one does when you're trying to uh, make a proper thing. And this is gonna go into, into a goblet, another goblet. I, I think I need to grab one of my other, um, uh, actually I'm gonna go with, uh, I know what glass I'm gonna use. I know what glass I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a snifter glass. It's not a goblet, it's a snifter glass. I just haven't used it in a while, so. Let me grab our safety equipment. Goggles and sunglasses. No, that's fine, just goggles. Grab the murder weapon. It's a wrench. Because I don't have a proper container for it. I need my cheesecloth, which I use for crushing ice. 
We'll lay that atop the bar. I'm gonna try to get it a little more. Oh, there's still some bits of ice on there. How pleasant. Thank you for being, oh yeah, there's just bits falling on the floor. That's, that's beautiful. I'll grab two big ice cubes and I'll crush it up. Apparently two full ice cubes is enough to completely fill up what the equivalent of what we're calling a goblet. So uh, I'm gonna grab two more. I'll put them in here. I'm gonna move the fragile things off to the side. Gonna wrap things up. Give that rascal a wrap. It's sticking to itself. And then we're just gonna just gonna go wild. What's going on in your life? Anything bothering you? Somebody somebody need a whacking? Allow me to give that person a very metaphorical ice bag whacking for you. To all the annoying shit that you're going through right now, here's to it. Ice cubes fill up. Not okay. We're not letting that little shit get away. No, no. This is for you. There we go. When you're done, make sure to take off your safety equipment. And put away your murder weapon, lest somebody find it. Dom says, I'm moving next month. That's the only new thing. Dom, you're moving? Oh my god, I'm gonna miss you, man. I I know that's not how the moving thing works, but, you know, whatever. That'll be cool. Yo, excitement. Hopefully you're not having to move everything yourself like Anna and I had to do um, when we moved into this apartment. Everything was moved on our own. The moving company wanted to charge us $4,000 to move a bed frame, a couch, and a television. That was it. Um, we did it ourselves. All right, now I need to grab the actual ice for the shaker, which I completely <laughs> forgot to do already. I'll grab one of my, I'll grab one of my, um, my tiny ice cubes as well. Um, and I'll grab one of my uh, ice cubes from the other one. Okay, I'll grab one of my spherical ice balls. That's a Pokemon move. There we go. Get it all up in there. Sort of, says Dom, but I don't have a lot of stuff at the moment. Just got to pack the car up. Dude, I hope that goes incredibly well for you. Moving is a very exciting and very intimidating thing. There is a little bit of... I'm not putting that in there. That's going to be way too diluted. I was going to put a tiny piece of ice in there. I'm like, no, not about that life. Not this time. There we go. Close that back up again. Dude, I hope all that goes well. That's exciting and terrifying. Is it far away? Do you have to do... Well, I guess you don't have too much stuff to move, but are you moving far away, a little close by? I know when Anna and I moved, we only moved like two blocks away, just about, so it was nice. This is Aku Aku. In its container, we have white rum, brandy, lime juice, pineapple juice, simple syrup, and some mint leaves. Oh, my sunglasses fell. That's because I'm supposed to wear the sunglasses when I shake the thingy. Duh, that's what you're supposed to do. Otherwise, you don't look cool. Excellent. That was a pretty rockin' shake if you were following along at home. I hope you're feeling tiki-tacular. Anyway, um, with with that awkwardness out of the way, let's 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 make a cocktail, shall we? Let's let's switch the angle. Let's go back here. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll bring this guy down a little bit over top of my little bar setup. I'm gonna grab the glass that I plan on using. I got a snifter glass. You. It says here to use a goblet. To be perfectly honest, though, this feels very goblety to me. Goblet. There we go. A beautiful looking goblet. I'm gonna take all of our crushed ice and I'm gonna put it inside. Uh, I'm starting to realize that this particular method of putting crushed ice in a little cheesecloth bag, um, the ice chunks are sticking to the fabric. Um, it's really, really difficult to get out. I realize that that is room for improvement. So uh, I think when uh, the tax return comes in, maybe I'll get myself a Lewis bag. 
It's finally time for that. Also, this glass is really difficult to put crushed ice in, evidently. Wow, look at that. Okay, well, we're trying. We're trying our best this. Oh, look at that. Look at it go. Ooh, I think it's working. Ooh. 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 Sort of, kind of. Sort of, kind of. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's getting there. Oh, it's really... I'm really feeling it. Come on, get, get. I know you really can't see what's going on here, guys. I'm sorry. There we go. It's a little, just a little... This is not conducive. You know what? We try what we can. We we do what we can. We are bartenders. <laughs> bartenders make do. No, I wanted that piece of ice. <laughs> yeah. You definitely just saw me pick that ice thing off the floor. <laughs> just kidding. We're not going to get that. Yo, I actually threw that ice cube and it landed right in the bucket inside the cordial glass. That was cool. And nobody saw it, but it's okay. Here, more crushed ice. Get on there, pal. All right, anyways. Crushed ice in your glass. That's how we do it. Now, just got to pour our cocktail into it and give it a garnish. The garnish is... Oh, we'll make the garnish first, because I realize... I, 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 I'm apparently really unaware of the best order to be making drinks in, whether you do the garnish first or otherwise. You can use a technique tip. So what we have here is we're taking a lime, we're inverting it, putting a mint sprig in it, and stabbing it with a bamboo rod. That may sound complicated, but I'm going to teach you. I require a maraschino cherry again. I don't know why I put them back in the fridge. I did not need to do that. Maraschino cherry. These ones are probably from Giant as well. I'm not going to try to get my fingers dirty this time. Mm, just kidding. It's the easiest thing to do. See? Wasn't that easy? I don't want the stem on this. I do not. So I'm going to de-stem it like I did the other one. Pop them in the bucket. Give my fingers a suck. Note, if you're like serving people, like actual human beings, maybe don't stick your fingers in your mouth while you're making drinks. I'm serving a drink for myself, so this is okay for me. Do as I say, not as I do, so they say. So I have my lime wedge, I have my maraschino cherry, I'm gonna need a piece of uh, mint sprig. I'm gonna try to find a good one in here. Here's my collection. My fine wares of mint. Oh, I like this one. This is a nice one. Pick that off. Put that there. We'll save that for a little bit. It's not the freshest thing. If I could snip it right off the vine, I totally would, but I don't have that luxury anymore. You know. And we also need... Oh, that's totally it. Oh, and I need a bamboo skewer. So we'll get to that in a second. So what we need to do is we need to take this lime wedge... Ignore this lemon. This lemon doesn't matter this time. And invert it. So what we want to do is we want to invert it into a little boat. So what we're going to do is... There's usually when they have like cool garnishes in this book, they give you a tip on how to do it. I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to straight up try to take this and... Just like that. So let's see. Maybe I have to like cut the center first. We're gonna figure this out together. I'm gonna try scoring this lime on the inside to the point where I should be able to like invert it along the lines of the pith that I see. We're gonna try that and see where we get with it. With the, what the idea is we're gonna try to invert this. Actually, I recall doing this one time. Oh, it's for the hula skirt. I think I remember the hula skirt needed to be done like this, and that was on the previous uh, Tiki episode. I've done two Tiki episodes so far uh, at this iteration of the Bar with an X. Coolio. Man, how time flies. I just really wanted to do it again. Okay, so I've scored it on the inside. I'm going to see if I can invert it now. Maybe I should just, like, cut... You know what? I'm just going to cut open the inside. I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to try to see if I can just, like, inverse peel this thing from the inside, because this is, I am flying blind here. Oh! Oh! Come on, you got it, you got it. Just peel, just peel from the inside. Just get your fingers off. I'm gonna stick my fingers in it, over the bucket. Here. You can see the bucket in the bag. I'm gonna try to squeeze it over the bucket. I'm gonna try to squeeze the, oh, maybe I should have squeezed the lime juice first. There we go. I'm just going for it. Again, <laughs> Don't st try not to stick your fingers in the drinks unless your audience is, I guess your patrons are specifically asking for it. I'm just juicing it with my fingers. 
I'm gonna try to make this lime invertible. It's all about. Anyways, um, now. <laughs> That is terrifying looking. Now I'm gonna try to invert it. Hopefully, hopefully, or if I do it, I'll do it over here. Invert, inverted lime, inverted lime, inverted lime, inverted lime. There we go. I, whoa, I ripped it. Okay, well. So this is what I'm left with. <laughs> oh, we try, we try over here. We try our best. And uh, actually, despite the fact that we tried our best, we succeed every single time. Every single time. Let me wash my fingers off. Anyway, um, so first, invert a lime wedge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our mint sprig and pop it into one of the sides right back here. Just like that. Cute little cute little throne going on here. Pop it up, froth it up a little bit. We take our maraschino cherry and pop it onto its throne. Just like this. Beautiful. Actually kind of looks like a like a salad. And then I'll take a bamboo skewer if this guy wants to stand up. You want to stand up? Stand up for us? There we go. Stand up for a second. I'm gonna grab a skewer. I'm gonna use a red one. And we will merely stab it through from one side to the other. Oh, the, the cherry fell out. That's okay, it's okay. Everything's falling apart. <laughs> Y'all, oh my God. All right, well, I stabbed it from one side to the other. Now I'm just gonna put it back together again. As Humpty Dumpty once said. There we go, gonna spread that a little bit. I would assume if you were like in a professional context, you would do this ahead of time. There we go, okay. The garnish has been made. Albeit with a little lot of bit of suffering. I'm gonna put that in the background. Place this here. Our goblet, our goblets. I will raise the cocktail angle up just a tad. Just a tad. Just a tad. There we go. And now actually pour our cocktail into it. What did we make? Aku Aku. We're gonna see how this tastes. Shake vigorously, stir until cold, pour the contents of the shaker into a goblet. It looks like they're supposed to- oh, the content. oh. No, shaker filled with crush- oh! Oh, 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 oh. Pour the entire contents of the shaker. Do not strain it. Caught myself there. Okay, actually, I'm gonna save this crushed ice for a little bit later. Hold on a second. Let me, let me save this crushed ice. We'll use this later. Oh, I put it in a- wow, it's got holes in the bottom of it. Good golly goodness. Gee whiz, Batman. I read the instructions wrong. All right. Take the top off your shaker. Here's a, here's a, there we go. Pour it. Whoa, I got scared for a second there. That's it. That's it. Actually, there's not a lot of liquid in there. Not as much liquid as I anticipated. I feel like I want a little bit of the, I, I want a little bit of the crushed ice in there. Hold on. We're improvising. A little bit of crushed ice, just just a little bit. I've got this. I picked up this colander off the side of the uh, off the off the street. I cleaned it first. Don't worry. My fingers are definitely clean too. There we go. Get in there. There we go. Yep. Just don't be shy. Yep. 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 Yeah. They actually just just go for it. There we go. There we go. Crushed ice at its finest. And now we put our little monstrosity on top of it. Wow, that's spilling everywhere. It's okay. It's all right. It's only a mess if we call it a mess. It's a success if we call it a success. Well then, take a closer look at that cocktail. It's not, it does have a very interesting, I will say, this is certainly not as pretty as the picture implied it to be, but I think a, like a, I'm a little unconfident on the execution here. Either way, we have a cocktail, and for that, I am happy. So let me, excuse me, burp into the microphone, why don't I take a little picture of it. You know, it actually doesn't look that bad. When I post the cocktail blog this week, I will post pictures that I take on my side 
and uh, I'll show you all what it looks like from my angle. I think my my other phone, the phone that I use to take pictures, my it's a Google Pixel 7, I think, takes much better photos than what y'all see on the Pixel 2, which I use as my second camera angle. So, that's fun. That is fun. Let me put the shaker away. I don't think I'll use that shaker again this evening. So what we have in our glass here is Aku Aku, a, 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 a word that seems to, at least according to the Lad Bible, translates something to like a booga booga. I don't know. It feels a little, see, it feels a little uncouth to me, but um, I don't, I, I believe that's probably Hawaiian and I don't speak a lot of languages other than English, so how would I know? But it looks kind of cool. It's got fresh mint leaves in it. No, well, it's not really fresh. It's got mint leaves in it. You just crush it, you shake it all together, and you just pour the whole thing into your goblet or or a snifter glass. It's really whatever you have on hand. Um, I'm gonna grab myself a fancy straw. Put that into the side here. I think that is most appropriate for this particular instance. It smells very heavily of mint and lime. Very mint and limey because literally the entire top of my glass here is just a completely capsized lime wedge. So that is to be expected. The taste, on the other hand. Woo! 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 I like that. That's different. That's so. Mmm! That's like the green, like Skittles. It tastes like, I think, the green Skittle. If there's a lime Skittle, it tastes like that. It is very sweet, slightly tart. Dude, if there exists a lime sour sweet Skittle, that's what that tastes like. That is really tasty. There is that unique fruity flavor coming in from the apricot brandy of which there was two full ounces of it in there the white rum is is just kind of adds a little bit of like a sugary alcoholic tang to it lime juice super prevalent tartness of the pineapple juice super prevalent the effervescence of the mint so tasty in there so so good what else was in there some simple syrup just to, just to sweeten everything around that is delicious that is so incredibly fruity with a hint of tartness mmm it's very, very, very good. Really tasty there. It is so unique because that flavor of the apricot specifically is not something that I've had a lot of before. It's like straight up candy shop. Like straight up. I, I feel like I'm actually sipping like something that had a Skittle completely dissolved into it. It's very, very candy-like to me. It is very tasty. Wow. These are so... Oh, these drinks are dangerous tonight. Do I like it better than our painkiller, though? That is more complex than the painkiller. Ooh. Oh, that's so tasty. Wow. Tiki drinks are dangerous, y'all. Dangerous for me. I like pineapple juice, I like coconut, I like rum. Put that shit together or a shaker, build it over some ice, stir it, I don't know. Just put it in. I love it. I love, 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 love tiki drinks. Uh, there's actually, uh, there, there's, um, I know that there is another cocktail creator out there, and I don't remember what their, oh, I, I think, maybe I do. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try this shout out. I think they they go by Necromancer now, and I think they do tiki drinks every week, I believe. And that every time I, I do tiki drinks now, I I think of this guy. He does a really really awesome show. Let me see if I spell this right. Necromancer. Did I do this right? I hope I did. I hope I did this right. Maybe I did. Yes, that's the one, dude. He does a tiki show. I think every Sunday or so. And uh, it's it's all it's always tiki drinks. It, I believe it's always tiki, or maybe some otherwise. I think the time that I caught him one time was doing like a lychee martini. I believe, excellent creator. Also plays a lot of like I think horror games as well. Very very cool. And I don't know. I think of these drinks and I think of his streams. So go check him out if you like if you're into cocktails and stuff. Would highly recommend it. But this is delicious. Aku Aku tastes great. That is a fruity sweetness that I have never had on a cocktail before. I have had cocktails. 
that utilize that apricot brandy, but never a lot of it. Only only a little bit so as to like sweeten things a bit. But this is a whole nother fruit angle that I was like completely unprepared for. This was underprepared for, and it's delicious. Uh, the garnish definitely could have could use a little bit of work uh, on my side. I apparently need to figure out um, the best way to invert a lime. I'm very bad at that. My fingers are very, very sticky right now, so I'm going to do a quick moment just to kind of clean things up, get a little paper towel over here, wet my hands a bit, just so I can, like, make things happen. Um, it also seems that, oh, my internet is suffering a little bit. There's a VOD. Don't worry. There's a, there's a VOD that occurs here. Apparently, my whole bit internet, that my whole building has been at, having some uh, internet problems recently. Um, I'm on the fiber, though, so hopefully that's that'll keep well for me. But I'll wet my hands up a little bit. Do a little bit of cleanup as we make our way forward. Y'all, I have, if, if it's not already obvious back here, I have an absolutely amazing time doing these cocktail streams, not only for myself, but also for everybody else out there. It's always a blast. We're at almost the two hour mark now, and it does not, like time completely flies. This has not felt like I've been behind a camera in the limelight making cocktails for two hours. These things just go by so, so quickly. And I'll say, I'll, t I'll say to that note, I feel like there's never enough time to cover everything that I want to cover, to cover everything that everyone else wants to see as well. So I'll just make a little mention here that if you want a cocktail to be showcased on this stream where you think it fits within like a potential, potential theme coming up, I encourage, I actually ask of you to drop in our Discord, make a suggestion. You can use, I think, exclamation point suggest if I set that up correctly to make a cocktail suggestion either to make something off of a concept or using a particular set of ingredients or for a particular theme and I will absolutely take that into consideration. I'm always trying to find more recipes. I'm always trying to find different ways to bring ingredients together and widen my own flavor palette and then hopefully work on my public speaking ability to be able to share it with the world around. So if you have suggestions, feel free to drop them. I'm totally open to them because I want to explore not only what I know and what I can see in my own resources, but also to see what you know in your resources, hoping that you are somebody from a completely different walk of life to be able to broaden all of our horizons collectively. In any case, my fingers are not clean now. I'll put that in the bucket over here. I'll put my little towel back up there and put my rings back on as we continue into another cocktail this evening as I drink a bit more water because I'm... I get really, really hyped up when we do stuff like this. So let me grab a coaster for this drink here. I, I love, God, I love both of these cocktails. <sighs> Aku Aku Painkiller. Those are all really good. I'm gonna move the Painkiller forward. And I'm gonna keep the Aku Aku. Ah, 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 as in ah, ah, Aku, Aku or however you go for it. And uh, we'll move on to another cocktail in here. We, I, I would predict that we have one to two more cocktails left for this evening. So let's double check on that. There was one that I really wanted to do. Let me find that right now. It uses coconut water for reasons that should be obvious in a, the hottest of moments. Coconut water, coconut water, coconut water, coconut water. That's the one. All right, we're gonna do that next. The next cocktail that I have planned for this evening is one called, I believe it's Tahitian, as in like somebody from Tahiti, perhaps. It's spelled T-A-H-I-T-I-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, which feels like some, somebody who might be from Tahiti, a Tahitian, perhaps. That is on. If you're following along, along, along at home with your Tiki Drinks book, it's on page 119, which is in the modern Tiki cocktail section of the book. Tahitian, a very, very tropical, a very, according to this, the most, one of the most refreshing tropical drinks that you will ever have. And that's from Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp, I believe it was. Robert Sharp. And we'll move into that post-haste. Let me first erase my board over here. It's no longer Aku Aku. I'm really getting into this rhythm over here of actually up, um, updating the current recipe so that Everybody knows what's going on. Good night, kiss. Oh, good night, dearest. Bye-bye, stream. I have a fiance. She goes by Disney Queen. She's awesome. He likes to kiss me before she goes to bed. Don't know why. You told before, me to! I definitely did not specifically request you pop on stream and kiss me specifically before. No, it's just more fun when I do that one. It is a little... You know what? It gives me a little bit of that embarrassment. And you know what? It's a... Uh, it's... 
It's endearing. It's wholesome. Tahitian. Tahi. G. N. I hope that all fits on the board. Again, we're making some improvements around here, so hopefully I won't have to um, vie for space on the board anymore. Can we even see that anymore? We can kind of see that. I don't know. The lighting situation could definitely be better. Bye, Anna. Wholesome love is good love. Bye, Anna says Dom. She's already in her room. She can't hear me now. <laughs> All right. There's a lot of. There's been a lot of citrus juice in these cocktails so far, so I need to get some of my... I have acid reflux. It appears on stream because we're doing very, very, very sour things. So I need to drink a little bit of water before we move on to the next one. All right. That feels a lot better now. So the Tahitian, according to Weston and Sharp, is one of the most refreshing tropical drinks you can have, besides a tiki drink, of course. It's coconut water. Oh, that's the most refreshing drink that you can ever have. Coconut water, aside from the tiki drink, which this coconut water is being used in the tiki drink. You'll see. And there's no better way to enjoy coconut water than straight out of the fresh coconut. The light, creamy Tahitian uses both coconut water and coconut cream for a dreamy cocktail that'll make you think you're right on an island beach with a freshly picked coconut in hand. It combines white rum, coconut water, cream of coconut, and orange curacao. I have still been looking far and wide to find some orange curacao that I can use behind the bar. I haven't been able to find it yet. I'll use an orange liqueur substitute. In this case, it is a uh, Patron orange liqueur called Citronge. But the book does mention a fresh coconut. So what was I able to find at the store? But a coconut that you can crack open and extract the coconut water from. So uh, I'm gonna try to get coconut water out of this coconut. I think this will be fun. That's our coconut water. We're also gonna need white rum. So the Bacardi comes out and makes another very broad appearance. We'll need more cream of coconut, which means I'm gonna go back over here and go back into the container that I used to save it a little while ago. That'll be this guy. And we will also need our orange curacao or some orange liqueur equivalent. The closest one I can find is this Citronge by, um, it's by Patron. I know it is. It's tequila based, I believe. Um, it's the closest thing I got. You could probably also use like a Cointreau here. You could probably use something like a triple sec here. I have a triple sec. If you want to make it blue, I'm sure you could use blue curacao if you wanted to. All of them are orange in slightly different ways. I haven't yet tried it, so I don't know exactly what the best combo is. So I will try to do my best to give a bit of a um, suggestion, I suppose. So what we're going to need in this, we combine everything into a shaker, fill it with ice cubes, we do our whole thing. I'm going to move on to my other cocktail shaker. Recall, I only have two over here. Um, so I'm going to fill one side up with the ice cubes, kind of let that dilute for the rest of the time that it takes for me to get the coconut water out of this coconut and the other reagents. Um, we'll pour out the excess water, and I'll give this thing a shake. But first, I need ice cubes. But first, I'll take one large ice cube. I usually do one large ice cube and two little cubes. They are all cubes, um, unless you use the circles, in which case, not all of them are cubes. I put them into the big side of glass over here, trying not to knock things over, and I just kind of let that sit to the side as we put all of our liquid reagents into the small side. But alas, all of these things take a sideshow for the time it takes for me to open up a coconut. I, I was looking for coconut water today at the store and I came across a Frida's Tiki's drinking coconut. Paradise found, exclamation point, ellipses, ah, with two H's and a period at the end of it. I was under the impression, according to the instructions on this package, that I can actually whack it with a knife, remove the top of the coconut, and extract the coconut water straight from the coconut. and. That just sounded like something I'd really like to try. So, I'm joined by my wonderful friend, the Very Large Knife, which I'm going to, for the purposes of this stream, name Lucy. This is Lucy, at least for this particular stream here. It is a knife. Don't play with knives. Um, open coconuts with knives. That's really the only thing you're supposed to do with it. Uh, that's going to be... That's, that, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to get coconut water out of this coconut. It seems like a fun experience. Um, so far, and I will give my full unbridled review. Uh, very easy. 
to open up the packaging. Uh, just a little prick from our knife over here allows us to remove the coconut more or less completely. Um, already hair dehaired. It's very, it's very this. This is this is exactly what it is. Um, it's got a nice styrofoam around it. I'm probably gonna have to recycle that. It contains in this container um, one young coconut from Thailand. Keep refrigerated. It's definitely been refrigerated 100 percent satisfaction guaranteed so if we have problems here with i guess the drinking of the coconut water experience we are just gonna have to explain to uh we're gonna have to complain to fritas um i'll take care of it how to open step one cut away husk until you see the peace sign okay two locate soft spot and use heel of knife to break through Insert a spoon to pop the lid off, add straw, and enjoy. I have bar spoons and stuff. So actually, I think this will be best done if I take the cocktail angle and I put it over top of everything. And we're just going to try to see whether or not we can understand what's happening here. Oh, my phone wants to fall. And I'm not going to let it. Not at all. Let me adjust this angle over here and we'll see if we, we have liftoff. Do we have liftoff? Do we have liftoff? We have liftoff. Great. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the bar again. This is the instructions that I see on my label. It says that I am to do exactly what I said, exactly what I said I'd do. And uh, so I will keep that off to the side. I'm gonna try this. Supposedly, if I go to the top of this coconut, I should see a peace sign form, supposedly. So I'm gonna try that. Cut away husk until you see the peace sign. I'll cut away from myself as one does. This actually cuts really easily, to be perfectly honest. Oh, actually, this cuts really easily. It may sound like I'm struggling a little bit, but I'm not. This is this is just normal. My, my upper arms are not that strong, to be honest. Okay. Um, I don't see a peace sign just yet, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep on going. Okay, that was not as good as I wanted it to be. It's getting a little tough now. It is very tough now. It's getting very, very tough. Make sure to always cut away from yourself. I, I say, hope, trying not to cut away from myself. I see a little, a little something in there. Don't exactly know. Try to peel this, peel this off. Try not to make a mess over here. Although I definitely am. It said I'm supposed to cut away the husk until I see the peace sign. I do not see, I, I mean, there's like, whatever this is, like vaguely peace signy. Okay, getting getting closer, getting closer, getting closer, maybe. All right, I peeled back another piece of the husk. No peace sign yet, it seems. There's some nice, it's getting juicy though on the inside. Um, maybe? Locate soft spot and use heel of knife to break through. Soft spot, I don't have a soft spot. Still going for it. It said I'm supposed to cut away the husk until I see a peace sign. So I'm just gonna keep on going, right? I maybe I just go to the sides, right? Maybe that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Go through the sides. Cut off till I see a peace sign, right? Maybe that's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's the first time I've done this before. So we're all learning together. Ooh. All right, well, I'm cutting through at least a piece of the husk. It's actually, it's very easy to cut around the side. Um, there is, oh, actually, this piece here. This is very, very hard here. So I'm under the impression that maybe, or maybe, should I be cutting from the bottom? Oh, maybe I'm supposed to be cutting from the bottom. Oh, let me try that actually. I'm cutting from the top. I have a feeling that I should be cutting from the bottom. So let me try that, let me try this again, but from a completely different angle. Okay, try it again. Oh, actually, I can feel a, I can feel a soft spot right here. Actually, I don't know if that's the right soft spot or not yet. We're, we'll find out. Try to cut like this. Hopefully, not gonna spill my coconut water. <laughs> There's a peace sign somewhere. I promise you that. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's soft right here. It is soft right here. This smells very interesting. It smells nice. 
I'm gonna try to see if I can... It said I'm supposed to locate the soft spot and use the heel of the knife to break through. On the side? Oh no, it's all soft! It's all soft! Oh, I can feel that! There is a soft spot here. Soft spot here. I can feel that in there. I'm supposed to break through with the heel of my knife. I don't know if that's working, so I'm just gonna stab it. Nope, maybe not. Maybe not. I, there's supposed to be... Here's another soft, soft spot over here. Oh! Oh! I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that worked. Well, there's another soft spot. Is anything leaking out yet? Do I have any, have any water? Nope, no water yet. I have, I have regular coconut water as a backup. Don't worry if things don't, don't fall through. There is this one soft spot on the side over here that I felt. Maybe this is where I'm supposed to go. It does kind of correspond with the soft spot that I see on the packaging. Locate soft spot and use heel of knife to break through. Insert spoon to pop the lid, pop the lid off. Pop the lid off. Wait a minute. Okay, so I pop it through on the side. Supposedly, I might be able to insert a spoon into the soft spot and pop off and enjoy. Maybe? Can I insert a spoon in there? This is where I am. This is where the spoon is. Maybe? Oh, wait a minute. I feel something. I hear cracking and stuff. This might be good. Might be very good. Oh, I hear crackage. I definitely hear crackage in there. I'm supposed to be able to put a spoon in there. Ooh. All right, maybe I need to do some more trimming. I'm gonna try more trimming. I will get this coconut open, I am determined. Cutting back the husk. Cutting back the husk. Cutting back the husk. There's some more husk off. I see a piece of it that I have ripped. Beautiful. Beautiful coconut. Keep cutting until I see a peace sign. I will breach the coconuts. I will breach the coconut. Breaching the coconut, breaching the coconut. It's nice and white on the inside. That's actually, it's a nice, nice color to it. Breaching the coconut. It's a young coconut. Coconut time. Cutting the coconuts. All right. Oh, I see a little hole. I see a hole. I don't know if that's the right hole. I'm going to try to stick my spoon in it. Nope. I'm supposed to stick my knife in it in the in the soft spot. Nope, I don't get that yet. I'll keep cutting. I don't see a peace sign yet. No peace sign yet. Nope, still no peace sign. Cut down the side. I mean, if I cut away this coconut enough, eventually I'll find something right. I, I need to clean my workspace. One moment, please. I need to put all this stuff in the bucket. There we go. This is wild. I saw this and I was like, this is premium quality content right here. Good. If I discover how to do this, then maybe I'll get better at it. All right, I'm gonna keep on trimming. I still don't see a peace sign. None of this is, I also realize I'm kind of, I'm bringing this coconut towards myself. So apologies if it's going off screen. I don't see any peace sign. None of this shows signs of peace. I'm gonna try to, I'll turn it back the other direction, I guess. Like, maybe there's still more that I haven't found on this other side. Nope, that just feels more of the same stuff. Still no peace sign. This coconut husk is a little splintery, all things considered. I'm, you know what? This isn't even a cocktail stream anymore. I'm just, I'm just cutting coconuts. It's coconut stream. Welcome to coconut stream, everybody. Uh, my name's Coconut with the X, and uh, I like coconuts. That's all it is. It's pretty centered for the most part. That's at least nice to hear. Those are words of encouragement. Thank you, Dom. There is definitely water in this thing. Like, I can feel it moving around. 
And the only soft part I've seen so far was here and there. Maybe that's where I gotta go. Maybe that's where I gotta go, right? Maybe the peace sign is over here. I felt a soft spot, or at least I did feel a soft spot. Nope, maybe not. Maybe the soft spot is, there is a little crack up here. So maybe it's over here. I'll say Frida's. I don't know if my satisfy. I don't know if I'm satisfied yet. I'm trying. Let's see. There is one. There's still no soft spot. Wait, there's actually a little. It's a little. I'm convincing myself of things that just aren't true. I'm try. I'm convincing myself that there's a soft spot there. It's a little soft. What about this other stuff? I'm gonna. I'm gonna feel this coconut. out. See if there's any piece of it that feels soft. I feel like I'm being gaslit by a coconut. Okay, okay. You know what? Okay. I gotta keep on, gotta keep on cutting. I just gotta keep on cutting. Let me clear my workspace a little bit. Coconut Massacre. Let's, let's keep on going. There we go. Continuing to try. Keep on a cutting. Satisfaction guaranteed, they said. You know, I haven't, I'm having fun with this, all things considered. There we go. Nothing soft yet. Still, still trying to search for that soft point that supposedly I will be experiencing at some point. Something soft? Nope. Just, just coconut. I am completely dehusking this coconut. <laughs> That's what's happening here. I'm gonna have a fun amount of cleanup later. I said we'd have enough time for two more cocktails. I have a feeling there actually will be enough time for any more than one cocktail at this rate. We'll see. We'll see. Anybody got any suggestions? What kind of a re what kind of tiki ingredients do you want to see? Anybody have suggestions? Speak now. All right. So I can see the butthole of the coconut. I would not consider that to be a peace sign. There are three little holes in the coconut. I, I can kind of see that as being a peace sign. According to these instructions, when I see the peace sign, there should be a soft spot somewhere along this peace sign. I do not know where that is. There is like a little, it feels cold. Like this is a very cold, it feels cold. It's a very cold coconut. Oh, probably because I had it in the cooler. That actually makes sense. There should be something soft around here somewhere. Some of these little... Actually, this this part, this hole here, feels a little soft. Let me... Oh! I cracked it. Okay, that's good. Now it says, insert spoon to pop the lid off, add a straw, and enjoy. I'm gonna... Stick a spoon in there. I don't... Nope. Doesn't seem to be popping any lid off or anything. Was well, pretty soft, though. Maybe I can just, like... Get the knife in there. Oh, okay. Oh, that's in there. Oh, that is so in there. That is definitely in there. Remove it. We got coconut water. Ooh, there's coconut water. There's coconut water in there. Okay. Now I just gotta get the coconut water out. How many? Co how much coconut water do I need? I need two full ounces of coconut water, and hopefully, wow, that tastes so good. That's sour, actually. My opinion has changed almost instantly. That's all right. I need to get the coconut water out of there. It says to use a spoon. However, I'm having much more, much more luck with a knife. There's a piece there. I feel like there's also, is that the only soft spot? I feel like there has to be more. Nope, that is the only one. I stick my knife in there and I am trying as carefully as I can to breach this coconut. I don't know what they say about putting a spoon in there. I'm gonna just gonna, 
Said, pop the top off and enjoy. I can't pop the top off of this thing. What are you talking about? Oh, I found another soft spot. Hold on, let's try this. Well, it was pretty soft. At least I thought it was. It's very moist over here. I'm going to see whether or not I've made an incision in here. And I'm going to try to pour out two full ounces of coconut water into a jigger. Here is my jigger. Um, let's find out. Can I get coconut water? Nope. Maybe I need to make the hole bigger. What do I have over here that is small and stabby? Small and stabby. What do we got over here? I have a metal straw. I have a tiny knife. Let me try those. I'm going to try my metal straw and see what happens. Let's try that. Metal straw. Oh, it's yet yeah, totally worked. The metal straw just like went straight in. That was incredible. Okay, so metal straw completely in there. Completely, completely in there. Oh, apparently OBS is connected. That's not fun. Hopefully we'll be back in a hot minute. This, this stream will continue to run. And the VOD will be up later on. Lovely. Love how we're having internet connections for tonight. Let me add some coconut water in here. I believe I have some. Or at least I'm trying to. That ain't working. I'm trying my bestest. Wow, is this stream not doing thing? Oh my god! This is the first time I've had internet problems in this stream. In this new apartment. That's wild. What I can do is I can try and siphon out the coconut water. Which I kind of did. Yep. That's a little bit of coconut water. I can keep doing this for a little bit. Let's try that. Trying my damnedest over here. That's kind of working. A little bit. It's kind of working a little bit. Wow. All right. Oh, it says that I'm offline right now. That's kind of unfortunate. Well, I think the stream will pop back on in a second. Hey, look, we're back. Great. Don't know what happened there. And it's being weird. We have coconut water. Ever so slightly. I am siphoning out coconut water from this thing. Ooh, I can use the power of the straw. Wait a minute. Okay. I'm going to switch my cocktail angle back. I know a physics trick. It's going to help us here. If I put this at a higher altitude and I create suction by holding my finger over top of the straw and pushing it on the inside, right? Now, I'm going to create two angles of elevation. And I should be able to siphon out the coconut water. Nope, that didn't work at all. Hold on, I'm going to try this one more time. All right. Take my straw out. Put my finger over top. Put it back in to the coconut water. I'm going to tilt it over and do that and it didn't work whatsoever that's all right back to the other plan i don't think anybody needs to see this up close so here we are more coconut water it does not want to why is it coming out the other side how is it coming out the other side i don't understand this there we go there we go i've reached a steady state dripping coconut water I'm tapping the coconut for the water. <laughs> we have less than an ounce of coconut water right now. I think my other method was working quite well. I'll go back to it. Siphoning. Ever so slightly. There is a lot of coconut water in here. And I believe there's at least two ounces. So I'm just going to keep at it. Until I have two full ounces of coconut water, I'm going to keep siphoning from this coconut. There is a sizable amount of water in here. And after I have my full two ounces, I'm just going to chug a coconut. That just seems right. What brand of coconut was this? This was Frida's Tiki's Drinking Coconut. If you can manage to get into the coconut, dude, you've earned it. This was tough. Evidently, what you're supposed to do is find the three holes that you can find in any coconut, which you have to dig for. You have to poke your knife into it, I guess, and puncture it with a straw. You better have a metal straw. Otherwise, you're not going to get very far with it. This has been an intense process. But at the other side, 
what we have is indeed just about two ounces of coconut water, which I have almost filled up to the top of this jigger over here. I have to put that into my shaker. We're making a cocktail over here. The Tahitian. All of this effort for coconut water. I should have just bought some Vita Coca. Would have been a pretty good idea. All right. That is all the coconut water that I need. Two full ounces, or about 59 milliliters of coconut water, fresh from a young coconut. How does this taste now that I've taken that we've taken all this effort into it? Mmm, that's tasty. That's a really, that's a really nice. That is really nice coconut water. I like that. Mmm. Johnny Appleseed, kid. Welcome. Welcome to the bar. Hello there. Greetings. How are you? This coconut is different than other coconuts that I've had. It's like, compared to like, coconut water from, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, I just bought an entire container of, of coconut water, and I just like, I just drank the whole thing. I used it for a stream, and then I drank the thing afterwards. It's just, it's, it's interesting. It's coconut water. That's what it is. But a cherry says, hi, what are your pronouns? My pronouns are he and him. I appreciate you for asking there. I present as the male. I was born as the male. I present as the male. It's not the same for many. Whether you're in between or beyond, all are welcome here at the bar with the next. Nobody's ever asked me that before. That is very kind of you. I really appreciate that. Wow. We're finding the good ones. Every once in a, every once in a while, we find some good ones out there. Anyways, I'm going to chug the rest of this coconut water because this is great and I do not want it going to waste. It will go in a cocktail, though. That one. What am I glugging on right now? Says Buster Cherry. This is, according to the container, a young coconut that we have staved for about, uh, we've been trying for about 15 minutes to get into the coconut. And now that we have, we've extracted about two ounces or 59 milliliters of coconut water to go into a cocktail. And in the meantime, because it took all that effort, I'm just enjoying a little repast over here. Fruits of our labor. Just really, just really going for it. My pronouns are Zay, Zay, and Zar. I'm an alien sex robot from Mars. Johnny Appleseed, you are the first alien robot from Mars that I've had over here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anyway, it's coconuts out. So that is going into the bucket with the rest of the stuff. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup over here because this is, oh my goodness. I'm just a he him, says Cherry. Nothing whack like. Zay or Zar. Well, to each their own, I suppose. I know at least one person personally who goes by, I think it is, they go by, I think it's they, them, or she, her, and I think it's, I think it might be Z, Z, Za. It might be. I don't, I don't remember though. I haven't looked at their Twitter profile in a while. In any case, I'm going to continue to do a little bit of cleanup over here. I have completely made a mess of this bar, attempting to crack open the coconut, and we did. We cracked open the coconut, we got to the delicious coconut water that lies within, and to be honest, compared to- it, it tastes nothing- it, it tastes very, very similar to the coconut water that you can just buy off the shelf. I don't know, aside from potentially broadcasting a live show to people who may be watching this years in the future. I don't know why you would want to go into a coconut with all that effort. Um, but I feel like because of the effort, it actually tasted a little bit better, all things considered. All right, so the next ingredient that we have in this cocktail, the Tahitian, aside from two ounces of coconut water, is one and a half ounces, or about 44 milliliters of white rum, of which I will very, very happily grab some Bacardi and throw that into this shaker over here. Whoops. Nothing fell. I promise. I promise. Is she, her, they, them, they, za, a psychopath? No. Not the person I know. I don't believe they are. They could very well be a psychopath, but uh, I haven't asked recently. Um, kind of. LOL. A little bit. A little bit. Oh, I need one and a half ounces, so I gotta flip this to the other side. We are all accepting over here, and if we're not gonna be accepting, then things will be sad. We only be sad over here. Accept all, and if you're not, then please respectively move along. In any case, we have our 
what was it, one and a half ounces of our white rum in there. And we also need a whole ounce of cream of coconut, which we have from an earlier cocktail. So let's pop that in there. Nice. All right. Can we make this one a double? Oh my goodness, but I just drank all the coconut water. Oh my goodness. I can't make this one a double, unfortunately. Well, actually, I do, have, I do have more coconut water, but I'm already, let's see, we're like three drinks in so far. Um, we've got some very nice ones so far. I'll do a roundup by the end if you stick around and I'll share all the recipes and stuff. When I need a full ounce of the coconut water, or coconut cream, and that came out a lot easier than I thought it was going to. It's still very, very viscous from before and still tastes just as good as it did previously. The brand of coconut water that I have, or coconut cream is Coco Lopez, I believe, and it is absolutely getting all over the place, but it tastes great. And now I need to go for, I don't know why I keep putting my towel back over here. That's great. That is very, very good there. The cream of coconut actually, it's not as, so the last time I had Coco Lopez specifically, it the, the coconut cream and the other part of it actually kind of separated a little bit and it was a lot sweeter than it is now, but it's a lot more balanced. Still kind of viscous, a little funky. I kind of like that. And the last ingredient we'll need is a quarter of an ounce of orange curacao. I don't have specifically orange curacao with me right now. I have this orange liqueur equivalent called citronge and I'll, I'll add that in place. Uh, I just haven't been able to find an orange curacao at my liquor store, unfortunately, so I can't get that particular combination. We'll add a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters to our cocktail shaker. And then we just need to shake things up. That's all. It's a rather simple cocktail, unless you specifically put in the effort to get the coconut water from a coconut, which we did. And I'm actually, I feel, feel very proud of this. I feel very proud indeed. Oh my goodness. When I got out here, do we like coconuts? I love Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I bet they do shine. Indeed. Very, vi very, very, very vibrant, y'all. I don't know much about Hillary Clinton. Is that like, did, they, did she do music? Who does, who does music? I, Hillary Clinton? I don't remember. That's before, I feel, I feel like that's before my time. Was that in the 90s-ish? I guess it's not technically before my time. In any case, I've heard Taylor Swift is pretty cool. Uh, not, not a huge, I guess I'm not a huge Swifter, I suppose. Although, a couple of folks are. I gotta respect that. All right, so I've had my ice cooling for a little bit. It's very, very diluted now. I'm going to pour off all the water, which for the first time using this metal shaker, I've actually waited long enough to get some dilution in there. And we'll give this thing a shake. Ooh. Johnny Appleseed Kid says, I used to have a coconut tree and a Negro. Oh, I see. I see where they're going. Where do those grow? Hawaii? I'll say, yeah. All right. All right, y'all. I'm not about that life. Yep, I'm not about that life. Thanks for playing, y'all. That's out. All right. We'll continue on for things from here. In our Tahishiye. We'll give this a shake for... The instructions call for about 20 to 30 seconds. Although you can just shake for as long as you want to. And we're all good there. All right. We are going to pour this into a coupe glass or like a saucer glass. And uh, there's no garnish on this one. It's just a nice, cool, crisp, and plain cocktail. So let me grab, what do we got? I can put in a coupe glass. I, I, I got these new saucers the other day and I am a huge fan. I love these sauces very, very much, so I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to bring the cocktail angle back up again. Um, please excuse the mess, because we did completely eviscerate a young coconut over here. So, and um, that's that's the reason that's the reason for all of our mess over here. Let me do a little bit of adjustment, as we normally do. Excuse me, and then we'll come over here. All right, what do we got? Come over here. Over here. Come on. You got, that's really close. That's not, nope, that's too close. I'll move you right here. There we go. That feels a little bit better. And we'll strain this into our thingamabob. There we go. Okie doke, let's give that a strain into our cocktail glass. In this case, a champagne saucer. Whoop, like this angle over here. Ooh, that is nice and opaque.
There is just enough liquid for that saucer. My goodness, I love that. It's very satisfying. <laughs> Extremely satisfying. Put that down to the side. No particular garnishes here, but being that it is kind of coconut forward, I'm sure you could probably put some coconut flakes up on top of it, but I'm not going to, because I feel like that will ever that will completely cause the drink to spill over. And I'm not gonna play with fire this time. Uh, speaking of fire, I did say that one of the drinks that we were gonna do this evening might might involve like putting something on fire. I don't think it actually will. I think we're kind of running out of time, unfortunately. But there are so many different tiki drinks out there that I wouldn't be surprised if we come back to it another time. So I'll switch my cocktail angle back and we'll see how the Tahitian really tastes. All right. So this one, this is a reminder, had one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of white rum. We had two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of coconut water, which we actually got from a young coconut. We, we staved for it, we, we did it, we did it, very happily so. One ounce or about 30 milliliters of cream of coconut and a quarter of an ounce or like seven milliliters of orange curacao or some orange, uh, or some orange like liqueur equivalent. How does it smell? Smells very coconutty. Like, very, very coconutty. Mmm. I know what they were mean. I know what they meant by a very refreshing cocktail. This is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delightful. It is very coconut heavy because you got your coconut water in there, you got your creamy coconut in there. The white rum just adds like a slight, like like sugary taste to it very slight and of course it pushes in most of that alcohol i think the orange liqueur in there serves best here as just like a slight a, a slight adjustment to the type of sweetness that you're getting here now i find that this particular orange liqueur is a lot more orange zesty and i get that in there it's almost it's almost like airy light and almost effervescent in a way almost almost like there could be mint in there but this is really really pleasant it reminds me of like a coconut a very refreshing coconut yeah i feel like um, it's very coconut it's very cream it's very coconut this feels like this has been probably the most coconut forward drink i've ever had because it's, it's not like a, it's not like a pina colada where you also have your pineapple in there it's not like um whatever it was we made before that had coconut cream in it it was the um ooh, what was that called this is aku aku this was dark and stormy and this was totally blanking on what that cocktail was completely blanking on it we'll get back to it i'm sure i'll remember eventually but it's tasty and it's very nice and i would say that it is a very refreshing cocktail just as just as the book said, if you like coconut, this is a very good drink. And I love coconut. I love coconut very much. This is very, very refreshing. I would say now, wow, it's really difficult to pick a favorite out of all these so far. I really like Aku Aku. I really like the Tahitian so far. The Dark and Stormy is just not, I'm not, it's a little too, it's a little too sour for me. I'm not a huge fan of that. And I am going to figure out what the other, what the other cocktail was that I made over there. I'm not going to forget that. It was, oh, I just saw it. I thought I just saw it. Nope, not that one. Oh, what was it? What did I call it? Not that, not that, not that, not a Mai Tai, not a downfall. Painkiller. That was it. It was the painkiller. That one was also very good with the Pusser's Rum in there. Everything has been very, very nice so far. I like that. So what I think is I have time for I think one more cocktail recipe and then I think we'll I think we'll we'll call it an evening from there. I'm going to see if there's anything simple in here cuz I'm getting a little I'm kind of on the end of my wits here. I'm getting a little a lot of these drinks have been very very tasty. A lot of them has been some of them a little effortful. And I'm kind of tired honestly. So I'm trying to think. Let me let me look through the recipes and see see if I even want to do another one cuz I am getting kind of tired over here. So let, let's see. Let's see. As with all things go, if you find that you're reaching your limits, feel okay. Take a break or something like that, you know? You deserve it. Let me see if there's anything in here that is this simple. Ah, I bought some. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can. This one doesn't look too bad. Rum, overproof, cream, whole milk, syrup. You know, I bought whole milk specifically for this stream for one of these cocktails. So I'm going to do it. 
I'm gonna do one more cocktail, and it is called the Jamaican Milk Punch, which if, you, which if you're following along at home, is on page 88. Jamaican Milk Punch over here. Let me turn to that. I'll do a little bit of cleanup over here. We're gonna need a shaker again for this one, so I have to clean things up just a tad bit. And I'm gonna take my Tahitian, and I'll put it off to the side. I do not need this rum anymore, so I can actually put it away. Take my Citronga and put it back. Put my cream of coconut, which is actually making another appearance in this cocktail, so I will leave it on standby. I'll take this and I'll put it over here. Again, so far, all of these cocktails, except for the Dark and Stormy for me at least, are all really good. The Dark and Stormy as well is a very good cocktail as well. It's just not really my thing. It's a little too sour, a little too tart for me, so it's not to my particular taste, but if you like sour drinks that are well balanced with, with a bit of a ginger zing to it, then a dark and stormy, at least with this particular recipe, is good. And uh, we garnished it with a little, a little floating boat thing that does not really want to be floating anymore, so sad. Okay, so I'm gonna take my shaker, let me rinse it out just a tad, and then we'll head on to the next one. I'm glad that for the most part, a lot of the tools that we have behind the bar have gotten utilized today. I think I bought too much fruit, but that's okay. I, whenever I have like excess fruit, what I'll wind up doing is I'll make some limeade with it, lemonade, citrus aid as I made over the weekend. It was pretty good. It was nice. I made, I think we had some orange juice, we had some lime juice, and we had some lemon juice, I believe, all inside of, I think I just juiced them all. I put them in a container, mixed it with some sugar, a bit of water. It was good. The patrons that we had over very much enjoyed it. It was a totally impromptu thing. So the fact that it tasted good was very, very, made me very, very happy. Very happy indeed. All right, so next we'll, what is it? The Jamaican Milk Punch. And there we go. So the Jamaican Milk Punch, as described by Weston and Sharp, is one of the oldest mixed drinks, Milk Punch specifically, enjoyed by drinkers since colonial times. Milk Punch may not be as fashionable as it once was, but one sip of this coconut milk punch will put you back on the Milk Punch bandwagon. The drink is rich and creamy, with a perfect sweetness that makes each sip go down very easily. If you have a machete and a few coconuts on hand, you can serve this punch in a coconut shell to give it a little extra tiki style. Now, if I was able to get open that one coconut shell, I absolutely would have served it in that. But no, I'm not going to, because that was, <laughs> that took so much effort. Oh my gosh. So what we're going to need is to combine in a shaker some Jamaica, aged Jamaican rum, overproof rum, which means it's higher in alcohol content, some cream of coconut, whole milk, and some simple syrup. Now grab those ingredients forthwith. First, I'll grab some ice, put it into my shaker glass. I'll take one big cube, as I normally do, and two little cubes as I normally do, and place that into my large side of the cocktail tin. We'll let that dilute for as long as it wants to, as long as it takes for us to get the rest of the cocktail put together, which shouldn't take too, too long. Not compared to the Tahitian and, and trying to get into that coconut at least. I'll leave that over here to begin to um, marinate for a little while. In the interim, first we'll grab some aged rum or aged Jamaican rum, and I actually, I, I've been watching um, this guy called Greg from How to Drink. How to Drink, great show, great cocktail show on YouTube uh, for a while. And one of the rums that always seems to come up on his show is this Apple, Appleton Estate. And I've never actually had it before. It is a Jamaican rum. Uh, a single estate Jamaican rum, meaning it comes from a, a single location. I, I don't know what the, whether it specifies that it all has to come from, like, let's say, the same, like, sugarcane farm, uh, so long as it's under the same, I guess, jurisdiction, the same estate, beyond the scope of this particular exercise. Um, but this is, I've been told it's very, very good. It is a signature blend of fruit forward aged rum with aromas and notes of dried apricot fresh peach and a subtle hint of sweet molasses so i'm inclined to think that this guy this guy here this apple estate as opposed to being very very toffee and color caramel forward like the pusser's rum was might be a bit more fruit forward but i guess we're just gonna have to find out hello hi says randall welcome back how are you 
We're making a Jamaican milk punch right now, something I've never actually had a milk punch like this before. I did make one milk punch a while ago in honor of Pride Day where we basically just put bourbon and milk into a really, really large container with like cereal and stuff. And to be honest, it wasn't really that good. We've improved since then. We follow the recipe, we do the cooking by the book nowadays. So what I actually wanna try is because I've never actually tried Appleton Estate rum before, I wanna try it here. So I'll crack this open. I just got it yesterday. There's the, there's the plastic ripping and everything. I realized one of the things that I, I like to do is I like to explore these things live so that everybody gets a piece of the, the discovery. Because I, I don't know, something about experiencing something new on my own just doesn't really feel, just doesn't really do it for me. I would much rather share it with others. So here we are. Trying more rums together. Tried the Pusser's rum earlier, which I had never tried before. An Admiral rum, just about. I'll grab one of my cordial glasses, pop it over here. I'll give it a taste. Satisfying. So let's see. I remember my notes from the Pusser's rum earlier was that it was very, very caramel forward, very, very toffee forward. It almost tasted like I was drinking like a Heath bar minus some of those more chocolatey notes. That's the closest thing I can compare it to, but I believe that's just English toffee. It was very, very tasty, very candy-like, very sweet in its own way, despite the fact that it's, you know, rum and stuff, but very, very good. Um, and I think it smelled like caramel too, but I can't quite remember. The Appleton Estate though, Smells like most rums that I've smelled previously. Oh, I remember, for the Pusser's rum, I smelled it and it smelled like bananas. That was distinct as opposed to other rums. Some rums I've had smell like just kind of rum, sugar cane -y. Um, Dark rums like Myers to me smell like molasses, which, you can, molasses, it's like a very, I think it's a, I think molasses is a byproduct of the sugar creation process. I don't know too much about that. This just kind of smells like other aged rums that I've had. And I think, I'm trying to pick out like what those notes are, and I'm honestly having a little bit of a hard time with that. But let's taste it, and let's see how it tastes. Hmm. It's like brandy. I've had brandies that taste very similar to this before, and it's kind of brandy-like. I think those, and brandy is a liqueur, a liquor that is distilled from fruits and stuff, so I'm inclined to think that this is, this is those fruitier notes. And as I'm, as I'm talking more, and my tongue is moving around, I am getting notes of like, like peach. Things of like dry stone fruit and stuff. Uh, I get like something that's a little, it's almost apple-y on there, which is interesting because I've had like apple pear notes from brandies before, but not from rum. Although I might've gotten them from rums before. I think the other rums that I've had that were like kind of the amber, gold, brownish rums, I've had Mount Gay before. I think I had, there was another one that I've had previously and I don't remember what the, I don't really remember what the tasting profiles were like on those. Cause it was, it was a while ago, at least a year ago. And this is before like my taste buds started to, started to get used to identifying certain flavors in the more higher proof alcohols. So that's actually kind of relatively new for me. So I don't really know whether it tastes like other rums that I've had before because my mind, my brain just can't quite comprehend it. That and also we're like three or four drinks in so far. So that's great. I need a bit more water in that to be able to get through this last one. But this is good. I like that. It is much more fruit. It is much more fruit forward than the Pusser's is. A lot less forward on those sugar and molasses notes than other rums that I've had. It's nice. It's almost apple-y. It really does remind me of like brandy. But there's something else there. I can't quite distinguish what that is. In any case, we need one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of this aged Jamaican rum in our cocktail shaker. Let's go for that. I realized that my my measuring material, actually this one's dirty and I haven't used this other one yet. So I'm gonna measure in units of 25 milliliters. And I will put an ounce and a half of this in there. Let's see how far I get up from my cordial glass. Make sure we try to use everything that we have. Otherwise we're wasting some really nice apple to the state. I think, I think this might've been the most expensive purchase that I made the other day. Or it might've been the Pussers. I don't remember which one was more expensive. It doesn't matter, so long as we're enjoying ourselves. And we're in the company of friends. So we need one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of some aged Jamaican rum. I've got Apple Tennessee in this case. 
Next, what we'll need is a half an ounce of overproof rum. Overproof rum is merely rum that has a higher alcohol content than most rums do. In this case, I've been working on this bottle of 151 proof Gosling's Bermuda Black Seal Rum for a while now. We actually finished off the bottle of Black Seal Rum that I had earlier. Uh, They're just Poured the rest of it into that dark and stormy, and it is just as stormy now as it was previously. We're going to need half an ounce of this overproof rum, or about 15 milliliters. In this, in this metric glass here, in this metric jigger here, we are going to be measuring just about whatever a half of 25 milliliters is, so about 12 and a half milliliters of overproof rum. It is 151 proof, which works out to about 75.5% alcohol by volume. It packs a punch. Milk punch specifically. The next ingredient we need is two ounces of cream of coconut. We're bringing the cream of coconut back. We're doing full two full ounces of it. This might be the most cream of coconut that we've had in a drink so far. And most of these cocktails, if not, oh, one, two, two of these cocktails so far had cream of coconut in them. So this is a very, it's a, it's a coconut heavy stream. As far as tiki drinks go, you know, you put your lime in your coconut, put a little pineapple in there. That's what it's all about. So two ounces or about 59 milliliters, or if you're using this type of jigger, 50 milliliters. For the folks across the pond, or for the folks on this side of the pond who just so happen to have measured, metric measuring apparatuses, like this guy. All right, put this off to the side. I don't need that anymore. Finally, oh, oh, there's two, there's two more things. We need two ounces of whole milk, which I specifically got for this stream. We don't really, we don't, we're not really milk drinkers here for the most part. We like do alternative stuff because Anna's a little uh, lactose averse. So personally, I like oat milk. Almond milk also has made its appearance, as well as coconut milk, which I'm still working on from a stream that I got it for a little while ago as well. But this one called for whole milk, and as such, I wanted to use the whole milk specifically to really, to really like get the full impact of this cocktail. Because usually I'll make like substitutions and stuff, but as I've been diving more into it, I really want to know what a drink is supposed to taste like first before doing doing any sort of modification, if I can help it. If I can't find an ingredient and there's something that seems like it's going to be an equivalent, then I'll take it. But uh, this milk is from Giant. Whole milk. Vitamin D, specifically. Sounds good to me, dog. I'll take it. All right, and finally, we need some simple syrup, which I think is still down here somewhere. That's Orja, which I made for this evening and didn't actually use. I prefer prepared for like 11 cocktails this evening. I think we only got through five of them. Just taking my time. Guess we'll just have to do another tiki drink stream at some point. It's just how it's just how it is. We all also need oh a teaspoon of simple syrup. I don't actually have a teaspoon over here, so I'm just gonna like pop a little dash in there. Boop. A little dash, a little dash of simple syrup. Not even gonna measure it out. It's great. Sweet coconut cream is amazing for drinks. Randall, you were right on, right on there. It is so, so good. I, I had, I experienced, I say coconut cream for the, per, for the first time the second time recently when I had my buddy on stream a little while ago. Uh, I say for the first time the second time because I know I've had coconut cream before, but like in my old age, I seem to have forgotten and it's magical. And I'm sure it's ma it's been magical in these cocktails too. It goes super great in this painkiller. It tasted beautiful with the fresh coconut milk, uh, coconut water as well in this Tahitian. And well, for this Jamaican milk punch, I look forward to see what it's like. Excuse me. So this one is supposed to go into a glass with some crushed ice in it. I'll admit, I'm a bit tired from this, uh, from today's stream so far. I think we did crushed ice for two of the drinks so far, and I'm a little farther in there, so I'm not actually gonna crush ice for this one. Instead, I'll put it into a rocks glass, put a couple of smaller ice cubes in it, and I'll pour it over top of there. Being a little, just conserving my energy, because I gotta do my cleanup after this stuff. So we're gonna put that together. I'm gonna pour out any excess water that we have into our bucket. And give this a shake and pour it into, it says, a large rocks glass filled with crushed ice. I'll pour liquids into solids, pop that on top, and grab a glass in preparation. Let's do this guy. This one was a gift from my brother. We'll do that one. And we'll grab a couple of bits of ice as well. And I'll put that in the glass preemptively. And I'll just use the rest of the ice that I have. I thought I might have run out of ice. And if I went, whoops, I dropped that one. 
If I would have gone the entire stream making all of those drinks that I specifically planned for, probably would have run out of ice. So all in all, this kind of works out pretty well. Gives this thing a shake. I guess that doesn't, that needs more. I feel like that needs more ice in it. I feel bad. No, it's, I don't feel bad at all. I'm gonna shake this cocktail, drink it, and see what happens. Shake it. Should make a milk punch. It says, strain the contents into a large rocks glass. It's not quite a large rocks glass. Not quite rocks rocks glass, but it is the glass that I have for this cocktail class. A little, little bit of rhyming action going on there. Let's see, can I get this thing properly in view? Hello there. Hello cocktail. How are you, cocktail? Honestly, that's fine. Despite the fact that the bar looks a little bit like a mess because of the, uh, the pieces of the coconut. So that tip into the bucket. There we go. And we will strain this over top. And we're gonna garnish it with a cinnamon stick, which I should have somewhere very close to the bar. Ooh, I like that color. I really like that color. I don't know something about those something about these um, coconut drinks that are very very opaque and it's got to do, it's that it's that creamy coconut that's what's that's what's doing it. Let me grab a uh, cinnamon stick as well and we'll stick that over top. Stick it, get it? I got it. Boop. A little bit of trash. Clean that up later. We'll put that. I don't know. Right on top. Float right on top. It's got a cool little plus sign action going on there. And that's. Our Jamaican milk punch. Kind of like that. It's got a nice angle to it. My phone is on very, very low battery mode. And the camera doesn't... The camera's been really, really wonky recently. My phone camera, that is. I'll recollect all these things later with further pictures and opinions that nobody asked for. Put that off to the side. And this is our Jamaican milk punch. Strong smell of cinnamon, because there is a cinnamon stick floating right on top of it. Masking through that, it smells like coconut. Lightly like coconut. Very, very lightly. This had the Jamaican rum in it, the overproof rum, the cream of coconut, the milk, and the simple, and the simple syrup. Just a little bit of simple syrup in there to top up the sweetness a little bit. I've never had a by-the-book milk punch before, so I'm looking forward to this one. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I'd say it's less, it's certainly less coconut forward than the Tahitian. Uh, that, those rum notes are actually very pleasant there. I'm getting more of those, um, more of those caramel notes now than I was previously because tied into that cream of coconut, there's something, there's a different aspect of that rum that is appearing here versus in the, I guess, versus when I was drinking it on its own for the most part. It's very pleasant. I'd say that it might be, at least for my current state of mind, it's not as mind blowing as some of the other cocktails we've had this evening so far. And I'll do a recollection of them in a little bit because we'll wrap it up here in a little bit. But this is like, very, it's a very, very pleasant thing. I, I guess it recently, I haven't had whole milk in a while. So the texture here, I think, is the is the part that's different than the other drinks that we've covered this evening so far. Not only does it have the cream of coconut in it, which provides its own creamy texture, but the whole milk there as well has that smooth characteristic that's that's comes from the, I think it's the lactose. I think it's the lactose. The lactic acid and stuff that appears in whole milk and stuff naturally. There might be, I don't think there's anything acidic in here. Like for example, like lime juice or lemon juice that would like cause this thing to curdle up. But there are places that there are recipes out there that I think of now called clarified milk punches, where you essentially take something like this, you add lemon or lime juice, let it curdle, and then you strain out all of the solid bits, and you're left with a instead of an opaque liquid, you're met with some you're left with something a little more translucent. It's not what this one is. Jamaican milk punch does not get clarified, but uh, one day I'll try it. 
Dom says, sorry, I had to leave for a moment. I had to call my dad. Did I miss anything? Oh, we cr I cracked open that coconut. So that was pretty good. Uh, yeah, we managed to get it open. We got the coconut milk out of it. It tasted really good. And the cocktail that we made was this Tahitian over here. Nice, white, opaque color to it. Very, very tasty. Very coconut forward. And now we're on our final drink of the evening, the Jamaican Milk Punch, which is has a smooth texture from that cream of coconut, a well from that whole milk. And it's also got the, the more fruitier, kind of sugar notes, sugary notes of the this Appleton Estates Jamaican rum, aged, sing, whoa, single estate, aged rum. A recommendation from a couple of people I've seen on the internet. It's nice, it's nice. It's a little more, it's, it's more of a, I feel like this would go well warm, like with like a warm cup of milk, for instance. Milk being curdled is so gross. Not a fan of that cottage cheese at all. I love cheese. Like, like curdled milk is not super bad to me. It's not completely off-putting. I've made drinks before where like the milk curdles and you clarify it. So it's not as bad as it could be. Supposedly by clarifying it and taking out all the solids, you're like adding that smoother texture to the drink without all the like, uh, I think it's lactose and other proteins and stuff. I can understand that it's a little ugh, inducing because like, I don't know. When I used to... Trigger warning, I guess. When I was younger, and I'd have to do the dishes at my parents' house, I still have to do the dishes here, but I was always I would always drink my cereal with warm milk. I would always drink it with, the, not warm milk, but just milk. And after I would put the milk into the dish, into the, the, the sink, and let it sit for a while before someone had to do the chance to do dishes, the milk would sit there in the bowl for anywhere between a couple hours to a couple days. And having to go into the sink to take the bowls that had this milk sitting in it for a while and putting it into the dishwasher is disgusting. When the milk starts getting solid, if I have to stick my hands in it, I agree. I am not a fan there, unless it's supposed to be there. In which case, I will take one for the team. Randall says, there are drinks lemon meringue flavoring with milk, but no idea how it's made. Well, I would think if you do like lemon meringue, then you might have, some, for, for example, you could have maybe some egg in there, maybe some egg white to provide a froth. The lemon juice itself could be providing that lemon flavor. Or if they have like, let's say if it's more like lemon meringue where like there's a cream associated with it, it's possible they use like a lemon liqueur that doesn't curdle the milk that they put it into or the cream liqueur that they put it into. I'm very curious about that though. If you have a, if you have a link on that, feel free to share it if you'd like to. I spilled milk on myself. I was so distracted. That's good. I like the way that the cinnamon floats on top of this. It is a very, it is a very nice, I, I was like summarizing this one. It's a very nice way to get that milky texture with that coconut flavor. And it doesn't overpower the rum at all. The rum has a chance to shine in the Jamaican milk punch as opposed to it maybe getting like kind of wrapped up in the other flavors that you're placing into your tiki drink. Um, I'd say like the like the painkiller, but the painkiller had that nice dynamic there with the Pusser's rum. So, eh, I'm sure there's better examples out there than the ones that I could come up with. Uh, but in any case, that is that is what we've got this evening. That is that is all that is all I've got this evening. So I will do my little cocktail roundup. I don't want to ah, pause because of extreme battery saver. That's fine. I will pause and apparently my phone is really really low on battery. Um, let's do a little roundup over here. This is all I've got planned for this evening. I'm getting tired over here. Apparently the stream cut off like an hour ago because of some internet issues, which was interesting because that has yet to happen here in this apartment. We have a fiber internet connection. So I'm actually quite surprised on that, but it didn't seem to be a problem there. If anybody feels like they're really, really pining for that, I put all these VODs on a VOD channel, so you won't be missing anything. So in the order that we've covered things so far, we have a dark and stormy. A dark and stormy is a drink that I believe is either trademarked or comp uh, copywritten by this company called Goslings, who makes a black seal rum. They also create the ginger beer. And the idea was to take the ginger beer and the black seal rum and combine it together over ice. That's your dark and stormy. Well, this recipe changes it up just a little bit by adding some lime juice and adding some lemon juice as well to give a little more tartness, a little more sourness to the dark and stormy combo. It has a really nice two-tone character to it when you I put the the lime juice, the lemon juice, and the ginger beer on the bottom, and you put the black seal rum up on top, and it's got a nice layering effect to it until you shake it up. Then the whole thing becomes kind of like a like a dark yellowish color. That's a 
it's okay. It's a little, it's a bit tart and it's a little sour. So it's not really my type of drink. I don't like things that are super duper sour, but alas, we give it a try and see what we can find. The next cocktail that we covered was the painkiller, the signature cocktail of Pusser's Rum. Uh, um, a particular, I'll take the bottle out. It is a rum that has apparently been around since the times of the British Navy and when they used to give rum as a piece of like the payment to the sailors on board. This goes uh, into a drink combined with pineapple juice, cream of coconut, and OJ, and it is absolutely delicious. Pusser's rum itself, from what I've gotten so far, has like nice caramel and toffee notes to it. It's very, very sweet compared to other rums that I've had previously, and it goes very, very well in this painkiller here. If you were to have enough of these, either with this particular version of the of the Pusser's rum or the Navy, the gunpowder strength, 109 proof rum, you will not be feeling your pain because your pain will be killed. Hence the painkiller. Randall says, I have the link. Can I post it here? You absolutely may. Feel free to. I will try to take a picture of it so that I do not forget it. The next cocktail that we covered this evening was one called Aku Aku, which according to the Lad Bible, if that's really, uh, you know, you know, a good, a, a source worth trusting, um, might translate to like Abuga Abuga. Although I don't really like the way that that sounds, but that's the only reference that I have to go off of right now. Aku Aku uses mint in the shaker and pours that out into the cocktail glass. It, you combine white rum, apricot brandy, lime juice, pineapple juice, a little bit of simple syrup, and all of those mint leaves. Shake that up, pour it into your shaker. You don't even have to strain it, and it's very, very tasty. This was probably, I think, the most fruity drink that we had this evening, mostly because there was the two full ounces of that apricot brandy in there, which I'd never had in that regard before. It tastes super duper fruity in a way that like I'm not usually used to. And it was very, very tasty. Actually so tasty that I think this one might be like, it, it's, it's a tough choice, but this one might be my favorite drink of the evening. No. Mm. Painkiller? I like the painkiller, but I also like the, the, the Tahitian. The Tahitian is the other cocktail, is another cocktail that we covered this evening, and I'm, there we go, I got the recipe. The Tahitian combines white rum, coconut water, cream of coconut, and orange curacao together to create this nice opaque drink that doesn't really get a garnish on it. Small little thing in your uh, champagne saucer, it is very coconut forward. It has that coconut water, it's got that cream of coconut. It's got a smooth texture, and it is probably the closest to, like, a coconut cream pie. It's not quite pie. I, when I think of the pie, I think of, like, a graham cracker crust. And there's no graham cracker crusty stuff in there. But it's like, it's like coconut cream, but, like, more drinkable in a cocktail. That's the Tahitian. It's very, very refreshing. That addition of the coconut water makes it a very light and very refreshing drinking experience. We have Randall over here who put in tablespoon.com that lemon meringue cocktail, which I'm actually very curious in. According to tablespoon.com, to create the lemon meringue cocktail, use some graham crackers, a lemon wedge, a cup of lemonade, vodka, and tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk. Interestingly enough, they put the condensed milk in there and it doesn't seem that you have to strain everything else. So I wonder if, I wonder if Condensed milk has a different like, oh, I pinned that message by accident. I didn't even mean to do that. Whoa. Well, now your message is pinned up there. Congrats. I clicked the wrong button. Um, but the, um, whoa, what was I doing there? I think the condensed milk might have a little bit of a different chemistry there than other things, you know? Because usually you think that if you add some sort of acid like lemonade to it, it's going to like kind of, um, it's going to curdle a little bit, uh, but it, it doesn't seem to do so in this case. It also might be because we're adding lemonade, which is not as potent a sour as the lemon juice itself would be. It's like a coconut pudding. Indeed. Oh yeah. I would definitely agree with that. In terms of the Tahitian, coconut pudding. I like that. That is a nice example there. Let me see. Does it, does it reign supreme? Yeah. Yeah. Coconut pudding. Coconut pudding is a nice way to put it. There's something, there's something else there that I can't quite put my finger on, but coconut pudding is pretty close. If it was made with real coconut water, I would say so. It's very prominently tasting like that coconut water, which I love. And then the final cocktail that we covered this evening was the Jamaican Milk Punch. And the um, Jamaican Milk Punch was created with... I'm going back to my... My phone is very, very low on battery, so I'm having a hard time going through it. It was... 
made with Jamaican rum, overproof rum, 151 proof for instance, cream of coconut, whole milk, and a little bit of simple syrup to boost up the flavor there. It is a nicely textured drink. It is, I think, more on the texture side of things than otherwise. But the best part about it is that when you make the Jamaican milk punch, you still get all those characteristics of the rum in the end of your drink, as opposed to a kind of like mixing and matching with the other flavors in your tiki drink. This one is like, I feel like you could probably use, I guess in this case, it says any age Jamaican rum. And I think any age Jamaican rum that you use in this drink is going to have its particular characteristics showcased through it, as opposed to potentially being drowned up by your other ingredients in other cocktails. It's very well balanced. Balanced such that all of the ingredients get to shine there, except for maybe the overproof rum. I don't really know. I'm not really getting the overproof aspect of it there, but it is kind of boozy and it is very enjoyable. In any case, to everyone, Thank you very much. Thank you for coming to the bar again. I'll be back again next week with something completely different. Oh, next week, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. We're geeks around here. I think we're going to do Star Wars cocktails. I think it's going to be fun. I started planning for it already. I've got my, got my brain put together. We've had a couple of suggestions already. I'm really looking forward to it. And I have a lightsaber. It's a toy, but it's fun. And it's fun on all that. In any case, that's all I've got for this evening, everybody. Thank you for coming around. Oh. This was fun and I enjoyed it. I honestly had prepared about 11 different recipes this evening and didn't even get halfway through it. There are so many different drinks out there that fall under the tiki category. And all of my cocktails this evening came from this book, uh, Tiki Drinks by Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp. Not a sponsorship, just a really, really good book that I wanna recommend for anybody who wants to like get their own intro to tiki cocktails. This would be a good place to start with it. it I only say so because that's what my experience was. This was my intro to tiki cocktails and so far, Far, I have not been disappointed in the slightest. Weston and Sharp, thank you for this. You did it. Y'all, y'all doing a great job out there. Uh, to every, which cocktail am I gonna sip on for this this evening? This Tahitian is very, very good. Kind of my favorite. Very nice and coconutty. To everybody out there, no matter whether the sun is shining where you are right now, or may you enjoy the rest of your morning, your hot cup of coffee, your morning cup of tea or maybe a cocktail if you take a little hair of the dog in the morning, or if it is the evening time, as it is for me over here in the Eastern Standard Time, it's about 11-ish right now. May you have a wonderful rest of your night. No matter where you are or when you are, happy twilight, happy dawn, happy evening. I'll see you all next time. It's been a pleasure being your bartender. Until next time, y'all.